evening, everyone, and welcome to Kraft Stadium, where tonight's pregame sponsor is Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. And John Zerby alongside Danny Holbrook and our entire WOSN crew. And, John, we take a look at the Bulldogs. They come in, lost two in a row, but they looked like they got a shot at the league leaders. Yeah, they started out really hot, Danny, and then these last two games against Defiance and Salina, they've kind of slipped up a little bit. But they have an incredible opportunity tonight to go against the league leaders, the Wapakoneta Redskins. I think it's going to be a great environment here at Kraft Stadium. And we take a look at Wapakoneta. You talk about battle-tested. They've had big wins against Van Wert and St. Mary's. Yeah, and then, you know, their opener was against Marion Local, so they have been through the meat grinder already. And so Elida has an incredible challenge in front of them. That's why I'm so excited about tonight's game. When we come back, we'll have our pregame keys to the game. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium, everyone, where tonight's pregame keys are sponsored by Lima Chevrolet Cadillac. John, let's take a look at the keys for the game tonight, starting with the visitors, the Wapakoneta Redskins. Yeah, Wapak's going to really have to get off to a fast start, and the first thing that they're going to have to do is take care of the ball on offense and create turnovers on defense. Uh, one of the things is that they, they're not really an explosive offense, but they've been consistent with what they've done, and if they can take care of the ball, it's going to put them in great position to get points tonight. The second thing is to win the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Wapak is known for being physical, especially on defense. Their defensive line is one of the best defensive lines in the Western Buckeye League. So playing at a high level on both sides of the ball and then executing in all three phases of the game. And if Wapak can do that tonight, they are in the driver's seat for the uh, WBL Championship, Danny. It's going to be a lot for Elida to overtake them. And let's take a look at the keys for the home team, the Elida Bulldogs. Yeah, Elida's going to have to get on track, and one of the things they're going to have to do is eliminate turnovers. They've turned the ball over quite a bit, especially in the category of interceptions. So they got to protect the football tonight. They're a running team, and they've done a great job. They're one of the, the, the league leaders in rushing, but they have to throw the ball effectively. doesn't necessarily mean they have to throw a lot of passes, but when they do throw passes, they have to complete them, and they have to be for those big chunks to get themselves in a scoring position. And then finally, they have to match Walpock's physicality. I mean, Walpock's big. They're strong. They got it all, so they're going to have to match that tonight. It's Wapakoneta. It's Elida. It's homecoming here on WSN. You're watching high school football right here on WSN. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium, everyone. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Webb Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And hopefully we got a lot of great plays tonight so the instant replay crew can get out there. I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. I see signs is our instant replay sponsor. John, let's take a look at the home team, the uh, Elida Bulldogs. They've had issues with quarterback, obviously with Larkin Henderson going down. They, they took their shot with Jackson Cobalt, and they've now settled on Ryan McGue, the 6'4", 185-pound sophomore. I heard Coach Harmon talk this week and said he's, he's got a great arm, and they believe he can lead them to a victory. Yeah, and I think this is, this is the point of the season where, you know, you're, you're past the halfway point. I know Magoo is a sophomore, but you're expected to play a little bit older, so you can really look at him as the future. Um, it's unfortunate that Larkin Henderson is hurt. You know, we watched them earlier in the season against OG, and, Boy, he was fun to watch, and that Elida offense was really kicking. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting dynamic to see Ryan McGoo uh, take over. He's more of a passer than a runner. Um, and look for him to look for uh, targets like Jackson Koval and some others like uh, David Edscorn and uh, Noah Schweitzer as well. Elida comes in at 4-2, and 3-2 and two in the Western Buckeye League. They're led by Coach Kyle Harmon. The Wapakoneta Redskins come in led by Travis Moyer. They're 5-1, five 5-0 and one, five and oh in the Western Buckeye League in first place. And uh, look, <laughs> they're the standard there right now for the WBL. And, and, you know, the last few years, they've just been automatic when it comes to wins, playoffs every year, and just a dynamic program. Yeah, and, and Coach Moyer's just done a fantastic job. He took over for Doug Fry years ago, and I think people were questioning on what was going to happen because the program was really rolling. Sure. For a long time, Walpock actually struggled. And, um, and, and those two guys have really stabilized it, and I think Coach Morris even has taken it to another level. And they are just there. There's no weaknesses, Danny. They're good from top to bottom. So Wapakoneta will kick off, and back deep for the Bulldogs is David Edscorn and Amari Walsh, two dangerous return mans. This is Ed Scorn, and he is way back in the end zone, John. <laughs> if he brings that out, we could have some problems. <laughs> yeah, that was a great kickoff, a great start for the Wapak defense, and it'll be interesting to kind of see Elida offensively come out and see uh, what sets they bring and, and Walpock defensively how they line up here. So the Bulldogs come out there led by number 16, sophomore quarterback Ryan McGue, 6'4", 185-pound sophomore. This is his second start. They were real happy with what he did last week. They talked about some mistakes they made, but uh, nonetheless, they're very happy. They come in having, averaging 24.2 a game. Defensively, they give up 14 a game. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's that's the key is just uh, making sure that they score points, put points on the board tonight. It sounds 
pretty simple, but it's just something they had to focus on. This is McGuey hands the ball off, and <laughs> right away the Wapakoneta defense just swarms all over the running back. That was number 22, Brady Kirk. He is their leading back. Kirk comes in with 60 attempts for 323 yards and two touchdowns. And you see that front seven. And Coach Harmon talked earlier this week. He says it's the best front seven in the WBL. Yeah, they are, they are strong. And, you know, looking at them, they're, they're in a three-man front. But one of the keys, I think, is their middle linebacker, Connor Mechstroth, a 6'2", 210 senior. You're going to see him carry the ball tonight. But he made that first tackle of the game, and you're going to see him flying around everywhere. So it's homecoming tonight, John, and we got a homecoming king and a queen tonight here for the Elida Bulldogs? Yeah, we sure do. King Grant Hardeman, who's the kicker on the football team, and uh, Miss Elida Rose, Peyton Coon. So congratulations to both of them. And, Danny, I told you before the game, my niece is on homecoming yes, court, Olivia yes. Bittner. So I want to wish her congratulations. Wow. I told her, I said, I will promote your, your Instagram. <laughs> and she said, please promote my Venmo. <laughs> So there you go. Congratulations to well, Olivia. <laughs> I don't know that we can send her money right now from the station. We'll have to talk to uh, Ben. See what yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are back here. Second and nine from the 21. They'll hand the ball off. They'll go off to the right side. Tries to catch the corner and taken down. Number 10 for the Redskins. That's Grant Jolly with a big hit on number four. Tyler Carter, and they'll mix in Tyler Carter's speed. Uh, he's a little bit change of pace back. Yeah, and I like I like what he offers. Uh, you know, not flashy at all, but he gets the job done. He's very skilled, and, and technique-wise, he does a great job. But um, I, I like the way that these linebackers flow. And that was actually one of the, the corner coming up and making that play, Grant Jolly, uh, from his position on that on that sweep. I said on my radio show this week that uh, this was – I call it the defensive bowl. You know, Wapak yeah. averages 13 a game defensively, and Elida gives up 14 a game. So here they go trying McGue up the middle, and he is taken down, and that is going to bring out the first punt of the night. I'm assuming they're going to punt backed up uh, to the 26-yard line. I'm being a fourth and four, and that is exactly what Elida will do. So uh, three and out for the Bulldogs, and uh, we'll see what Wapakoneta can do on offense. And I think the one, you know, one positive for Elida is they did get some yards there. They gave the ball to three different ball carriers. McGue carried the ball, which is a part of that, that Elida offense is that their quarterback is going to be involved in the running game. But uh, it's going to be pretty good field position here for Walpaw. Back deep for the Skins is Jordan Schneider and Grant Jolly. High kick. It'll be picked up and fair caught by Jolly at about the 43-yard line. That's where the Skins will take over. Wapakoneta comes in at 5-1. and one. Their only loss, John, is to Marion Local. No shame in that. Not too they shabby. 5-0 and oh in the Western Buckeye League. And, John, for my money, they had the biggest and best game of the year when they took down the Van Wert Cougars. Yeah, I mean, that was an incredible game. Incredible ending. I don't know anybody in this area who hasn't <laughs> watched that ending on Twitter or YouTube or whatever. But, um, you know, I feel like that's just really giving them a momentum, a shot in the arm. And, They've played extremely well since that game, you know, and they're in the driver's seat in the Western Buckeye League right now. And, John, they are led by a freshman, number two, Caleb Moyer, 39 of 73 for 518 yards, a touchdown and three interceptions. They don't throw the ball a lot, but he is as athletic as any quarterback in the league. I'm pretty sure he was given a football, not a fooler at birth. <laughs> they talked and, about that um, a lot. Yeah, so, you know, he's grown up around the game. And he's, he's grown up going to practices, you know, being around dad and um, – you know, that, that's the thing. You say, well, he's a freshman, you know. It, uh, not but, now uh, he's not. No, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 he knows how to play the game, and he's a very good uh, uh, leader for this team. So here they come. <clears throat> Moyer is in the gun. He's got two backs, one to the one left, one to the right. He's going to hand off to the first guy through. Goes off to the left side, picks up about five yards. That's number 21 for the Skins, and that's Jason Nausch. And he is their leading rusher on the year for the Skins. Yeah, and I like, I like initially what they do. They, you know, Walpock is essentially a wing T team, but they're going to give you different sets uh, formationally, and then they're going to be in the shotgun a lot, running a lot of gun stuff. But uh, they're not afraid to line up in the spread stuff and throw it down the field, and then they're also not afraid to get in double tight ends and with, with backs in the backfield and come right at you as well. And that is Nouse's 101st carry of the year for 575 yards, and he can smell the end zone, John. He's got eight touchdowns on the year. Yeah, he's done a great job, and he's, you know, one of their senior leaders. This is more with the ball. Go up the middle and pick up a first down. That is a Citizens National Bank first down. They are our sponsor tonight. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Citizens National Bank is our first down sponsor. Take a look at the blocking up front, and they're just dominating right now in the trenches. I know it's early, but that's a great sign for the skins. Yeah, it is, and, and they're getting uh, yards pretty easily. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about before the game is Eli can't really uh, have any – unforced errors here or any mistakes and already we're having an unsportsmanlike penalty early in the game. Yeah, a little, uh, little rough housing there by the Elida defense, so they get 15 tacked onto that one and that's exactly what Coach Harmon does not need to start this game out. 
So Caleb Moyer will bring him back up to the line of scrimmage. 9.26 to go. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Kraft Stadium here in Lida High School. Caleb Moyer is in the gun. He's got one to the right. He'll hand off the first. No, he'll throw the ball out and take him down immediately by number four. That's Tyler Carter. And, boy, you can't play it any better than that, John. No, that was a great – it was a really nice play design. Moyer to Grant Jolly, and Tyler Carter just read it. You know, you could tell he had been studying film, and he played it really nice and made a great tackle, form tackle. Well, the, the, the fake to Naus really had me confused. And I thought, he, you know, he's a freshman, but, boy, he, he looks like he's been doing that a long time. And we heard Coach Harmon this week on the radio, and he talked about uh, – talked about this young man's progression and how he used to, and Coach Harmon used to work for it sure. at Wapakoneta, and he knew at a young age he was going to be really good. Yeah, I think they've been waiting on him for a while. I mean, they've, <laughs> they've had some some pretty good quarterbacks lately, but uh, especially with the Goulet kid in the past, but I think that yes. they've always had their, their eyes on this Moyer kid. This is Will Campbell with the reception, and we got a flag down, so we'll see what that is. And it looks like... I'm going to get a hold here. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get a hold on the Wapakoneta offensive line. And oh, number seven right here on the outside, the wide receiver holding on the defensive back. You know, that's that's tough because you're just out in the middle of the open. Everyone can see you, and you can't hide a hold. And uh, there's a lot of holding going on in, on the line. I mean, let's <laughs> say, you know, they, they kind of pick and choose when they throw the flag, but uh, when you're out in the open like that, it makes it pretty obvious. So 8.30 to go, second 11 from the 38-yard line. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Elida High School. Big WBL matchup here between the Bulldogs and the First place Redskins. Caleb Moyer is in the gun. He's got Naus to his right. He's got two receivers to his right. He's going to hand to Naus. Naus goes off the left side. He picks up about five yards as he goes through that elided defensive line. Yeah, and one of the things that I like that what they do is that they have a the formation strong into the boundary to the short side of the field, so they have a running formation that way. But to the wide side of the field, they have a twin set, so they give a spread look. So as a defense, you say, well, what are we going to defend? Are we going to defend the run? <laughs> Into the short side of the field, are we going to defend the pass? That really puts defenses well, in a bind. Don't feel bad, Elida. <laughs> the rest of the league's trying to defend yeah. this offense, too. And, and you and I talked a little bit off the air, uh, John. They're not a flashy team. No. They're just so fundamentally sound and so effective. Not to say they don't have great athletes, because no, they do. And, and I don't. I, I, I said it. I don't, I don't know if we'll see a big play tonight or not. But, you know, it's going to be skilled, and it's going to be – they're going to be technique, and it's going to be good stuff. There's more rolling to his right. Throws back at Crofty's body, and that was going to fall short. And that's going to bring up a fourth down for the Wapakoneta Redskins. So fourth and 14 from the 33, kind of out in no man's land, John. you got to believe that they may go for it here. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity. It's early in the game. Um, you stopped Eli's offense three and out in the first series. You're past the 50. You're well past the 50. I think, you know, it, it, this is a good opportunity to go for it on yeah. fourth down, unless they got a kicker that can yeah. do it. <laughs> well, they may want to pin him back deep. Uh, I think uh, what you said was true, that they, th that first series, they really showed that they could stop that. Well, they're going to go for a field goal. This is going to be a 50-yard field goal. Gold. And Kyle Beach Jr. here. I'm sorry, not a 50. It's a 43-yard field goal. My apologies. A 43-yard field goal. Snap is back. Kick is up. It's got the distance, and it's going to go to the right, and it is no good. Boy, he had the distance. If he could have went a little left, he would have got right across the bar. And, you know, that's that, that's a great call, though. I, I, I like that call. Um, you know, you say, that. well, that's a that's quite a challenge for our kicker. But, you know, kickers don't really get a ton of opportunities, especially in high school, to kick field goals. So give him the chance, and let's see. And there's nothing really hurt this early in the game to miss a no, field goal. No, like and, and I think when what we talked about earlier was the way their defense played in that first series. You don't feel bad about giving a light of the ball at the 33-yard line no, now. No, I, I like that call. I like that uh, – uh, uh, opportunity there. And the other thing is that when you kick the ball into the end zone like that, you get the uh, Eli will have to start on the 20. So they don't even have to give them, uh, like the NFL where they start, where they kick the ball. That's not the case in high school. They'll start back at the 20. So it's really like having a touchback. Well, let's see if Ryan McGew can get the Bulldogs some points on the board here. They'll start out first and 10 from the 20 yard line. He's got two backs. He's got a one in motion. That's Amari Walsh going all the way to the left side. He's going to roll to his left, and we get another flag come down. And I'm just imagining that's going to be an illegal procedure. Yeah, he's seen a little bit of shifting before the start. Looked like there was just a little bit of a flinch there. And, you know, it, it, you brought it up earlier, Danny. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing pretty quickly is both teams, they look the same. Yeah. Because, and, and you mentioned it, Kyle Harmon coached at Walpock. He's the offensive coordinator there for several years. So these teams are very similar. I mean, offensively, I'm seeing the same formations both ways. Right. Uh, so they know each other very well. So this is McGew in the gun. 
He's got two receivers to his right. He's got a man in motion. That's Amari Walsh. He's going to hand the ball off to Walsh. Walsh tries to get around the corner. He's being pursued by the Skins defense, and he'll be taken out of bounds. And it looked to me on that play like Amari Walsh, they had a hand in his face mask, and he was, uh, the, the official was shadow, or shaded by the, the, the players on the play. Um, we'll have to take a look at that on the replay. Yeah, and one of the one of the things that I liked there was Tyler Hauser, who is a he is just a beast. He's a defensive lineman, six foot three, two oh five for Walpock. I remember uh, calling a game last year, and he was all over the place. Made the play on the sideline. So second, thirteen from the fifteen yard line. The Bulldogs are going backwards here with the penalty. McGue is in the gun. He's going to throw off to the left side. He's got Walsh out there. Walsh tries to split the defenders. Gets up about five yards, and a nice second down play. And now, you know that. That's going to make it about third and uh, I want to say nine or eight, but at least you're not going to get the 15-yard you got to pick up. Yeah, and I like that play call because it's simple. It gets uh, – Well, it gets Walsh in space. It does, and it gets McGue a, a throw under his belt, and, you know, you're not asking him to throw the ball, you know, really far downfield, and now you're really in third and four here. You're in great position to get a first down. So third and four from the 27. McGue is in the gun. He's got two receivers to his right. He's got a single receiver in motion. That's Walsh. He's going to hand the ball to Walsh. Walsh tries to cut through, and it's going to be close, John, but I think he picked up a Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, that little last little ditch effort there at the end, he did a great job of uh, keeping his shoulders square and falling forward, and because of that, those inches there get him first down. John, I love the way that, and I know it was only one possession, the last possession that had, but Coach Harmon's going to stick with that game plan because he believes in his kids. Well, and, you know, I, I don't blame him. I think that's uh, – it's easy as a coach to say well, we're going to you know change this and change sure. that. I think it's tough to stick with the game oh, plan. Yeah. You know, it really is, yeah. especially when you've you've you have lost a couple in a row. So I give him a lot of respect for doing that. Here's here. McGue. He looks across the field. He's being under a lot of pressure, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield by big number 57 for the Skins. That's Jaden Rampula, the big 6'3", 290 pound youngster. Yeah, what a what a nice play. Uh, and I think there was a, a, just a bust there. It looked like the two receivers on the, uh, this side, Eli, uh, Elida's receivers, were blocking, and uh, <laughs> and the quarterback was throwing. So there was probably some uh, some miscommunication there. But what a great job to, to running down and make that play. So that's going to bring up <clears throat> second and 15. Well, and I think if, if you're Elida tonight, your margin of error is very little. Right, I mean, right. that kind that's, of stuff, yeah. you, you know, you're just putting yourself in uh, positions of penalties and stuff like that. It's going to cost you. This is Brady Kirk on the ball carry. Guy tries to go around the right side, and boy, the ends are just staying at home, and they're not allowing anything. And we call that in the game setting the boundary, and they're doing oh, a great absolutely. job of that. Mikey Lee, 51. I'm telling you, uh, he's got the hair, he's got the look, he he's does. got it all, man. He does. He's doing a great job, and he he's got he the ran Kevin Green look. Oh man, he? it was good stuff. <laughs> It was good stuff, and what was cool was not only is he running him down, but uh, Nate Metzger there, uh, DB, came up and made a play too. So a lot of credit for Walpock there. So here's Magoo. He looks across the field. He throws off to his right and hits a receiver in the head, and that's going to fall short, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. So he had Brady Kirk out there, but uh, he hit the uh, hit 55 out in front of him for blocking purposes, and uh, that's where the ball went. Tory Thomas. Yeah, I like the play call. I like the screen. Uh, it just but, uh, Tory Thomas was the only offensive lineman out there on the screen. So, again, I'm not sure if that, there was some miscommunication or what, but uh, Wapak did a nice job of, uh, of playing that, and uh, now they're going to have to punt again and going to get great, great field position. So back deep for the Skins, number seven, Jordan Schneider, and number 10, Grant Jolly. Kick is up. It's a low liner. It's going to be let go by Jolly. I thought he was going to pick it up, but he's going to let it bounce to about the 40-yard line. And that's a good starting place for Walpock, uh, you know, past the 30 like that. And, you know, if, if you're Elida, you're, you're good with that. You're good with uh, making sure that you get a good punt, you get a nice roll. Gives your defense an opportunity to make a stop here. Tonight's premier sponsor for Wapakoneta is Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta, Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. Al's Woody's Diner is our premier Wapakoneta sponsor tonight. You ever ate at Woody's? I have not good been to Woody's. Food. You know good what? Food. Uh, when I was working last year uh, as a principal at St. Mary's, uh, one of my classes that I visited often gave me a list of places to go. And Woody's was actually <laughs> on that list. You, never they had said, a bad go meal. There. Yeah, yeah, they say go there. So never had a bad it's on meal. my list to get there soon. <laughs> so here comes Caleb Moyer in the skins. They'll hand off to now as he goes up the middle. Gets a gain of about one to two yards. Big Tory Thomas and the Crim Reaper out there. 
I like him. Parker Krim takes him down. You know, I talked to a couple of the Elati coaches before the game, and I hope you know everyone calls him that now. <laughs> everybody. They said that everybody's calling him that, and he's living it up. He's liking that name. I said, well, you can thank Danny Holbrook for that. <laughs> well, I talked yeah. to Matt Tabler about that uh, a couple weeks ago, and he said, yeah. He said everybody in the hallway is calling him that. So I'm glad I can help him out. You should get some kind of commission off of that someday. Well, when he's Just in the NFL, you know. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll remind him of that. <laughs> So here we go, Caleb Moyer, he's in the gun. He's got Jace Naus to his right, and he's got two receivers to the right. He's going to hand the ball off to Naus. Naus goes off the left side. He'll pick up maybe three or four, close to a first down. It's going to bring up about third and one or two, possibly. 341 to go here. And this is what Walpock does. You know, 25 years ago, this would have been the eye. Yes, and a fullback yes, going right. right and tailback going right, and it would just would have been three or four at a time. Now they're spread out, but they're really doing the same thing. Sure. They're just giving it to guys left and right and getting yards. Left and this and right. is where they wear you down, John. Mm -hmm. This is this is their attrition. They just come at you and they never stop. Third and one from the 44, 319 to go. Moyer's under center. He's going to hand the ball off to the first man through, and he's going to pick up a Citizens National Bank first down. That's number six, Connor Mextra for the Skins. Connor is the big 6'2", 210-pound senior. And, boy, when he gets ahead of steam, he can really knock you. Yeah, and, and he's a nice-looking player. I mean, not only in the backfield, but uh, middle linebacker as well. And I like that formation. You've seen two tight ends and two backs in the backfield. And, like we said, they'll, they'll come at you. The other thing is that when your offense is on the field, uh, your defense is not. And Elida's yeah. offense is not. So exactly. these long drives of just wearing them down with run after run after run that keeps Elida's offense off the field. So here comes Moyer. He's got Jason Naus to his right. He's got a single receiver to his right, one to the left. He'll take the snap. He'll hand it to Naus. Naus goes off the left side, picks up about four to five yards. And, boy, every play is four, five, six yards. And and really clean. I mean, yes, right, you know, yeah. the way you, they're sharp, they come to the line, they get set. You see their linemen getting off the ball. Um, there's really no fanciness about it. I, I personally love this style of football. Sure. Um, the fans, you know, I know fans love passing. <laughs> well, Us announcers, like, we love yeah. to see the big play. Sure. Um, but this, this to me, is really uh, fundamental football. John, before we go any further, I would be remiss to mention this is a beautiful facility they have out here, and the grounds crew could be commended because other than turf, this is the nicest field I've seen this year. Yeah, the Elida, Elida of, uh, has been known for their – uh, turf uh, management, Jody Long, who's head of maintenance here for a long time. Uh, I'm partial, but he is the best. And the um, field is beautiful. Press box is beautiful. Oh, it's, yeah, it is. They've really done some upgrades here. Uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, congrats to Elida, uh, AD Dave Evans, and their entire community for really do making this place beautiful. So Jason Naus goes into the line, picks up maybe three yards. That'll bring up third and two from the 44, 133 to go. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Kraft Stadium here at Elida High School. Big WBL showdown as the number one team in the league comes into town tonight on homecoming for Elida, and the Bulldogs are trying to knock him off. So this is Moyer in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to go off the right side. He's going to pick up another Citizens National Bank first down. So they are very effective of that off-tackle run, whether it's the quarterback or the tailback. And I think the frustrating thing is, if you're a defensive coordinator, is, is you're, you're playing well. <laughs> yeah, they are. You, you, they really, really are. Yeah, you're playing well. But these, these three, four, five yards at a time, these little chunks will wear you down. And, uh, you know, Brady Kirk made a nice play there. Uh, coming in and, and, and making the play, but now it's just falling forward getting yards. So that'll bring up first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Moyer's under center. He's got Mex dropped directly behind him, and that's who's going to get the ball right off the bat. He's going to pick up about two yards. So tough running yards by number six, Caleb Mex, or Connor Mex dropped, excuse me. They just bring they just bring such different athletes each and every time. You've got Nextroth, who's big and physical. You've got uh, Caleb Moyer, athletic, gets on the side. Uh, Jace Nouse, who's a quick, shifty back, and they've just got so many weapons. Absolutely, and, and sooner or later, I mean, I know they're trying to they're trying to set the tone here that they're going to run the ball, but you're going to see them try a downfield shot and. Uh, you get some of these outside guys, uh, you know, like Grant Jolly and Jordan Schneider out there as well. You'll see them get a shot here soon. Here's Moyer as he looks across the field, fakes the ball. He's got Jolly up the left side, and he's got him, and he's going to walk into the end zone for a touchdown. 
Allen Davis Insurance is our touchdown sponsor, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. And that, my friend, was a good play. And you sound like a coach when you called that. Well, I was lucky because <laughs> that was – I really didn't think they were going to do it this soon. But uh, what a play. Uh, Moyer put it right there. It was a double move. Um, and, and they had set that up earlier because sure. they had thrown a, a couple short passes. And that's what happens as well. You've run the ball so much, you've got the defense concerned about the running game. And, and they really caught them off guard there. And here's the extra point attempt. Our extra point sponsor is TD Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TD Interiors on Allentown Road. The kick is up, and it is good. So with eight seconds to go in the first quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins strike first, and they lead seven to nothing. Lee's Famous Recipe and Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens. Lee's Famous Recipe is our first call of the quarter sponsor. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. And, John, they really made that drive look easy, and they, and they showed it all. They showed power sweeps, they showed off tackle, and they threw it through the air. Yeah, they just did an awesome job. They set up everything. I mean, some short passes there, but mostly off tackle runs, like you said. And then that double move there to Jolly, boy, that was, that was beautiful. So this is... I, dare I say, a very important drive for the Bulldogs, but I think they've got to answer with at least moving the ball across the midfield strike. Yeah, and I, and I think this is going to be a game that, you know, I don't, I don't think Wapak's going to score 42 points. Oh, tonight. no, I, I think you you're right. I, mean? yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, it's going to be – they're going to be in position to, to get points back and keep the game close. So I agree, you know, you're at the end of the first quarter. Get some yards, get some first downs, get some momentum here. Um, but you don't, have, you don't have to score right away. Sure, sure. So here come the dogs with eight seconds to go here in the first quarter. Let's see what they choose to do to run out this first quarter. <clears throat> Ryan McGew is in the gun. He's got uh, Tyler Carter. He's going to hand off to Carter, and Carter's going to go up that line, and he's going to get nothing, and he's going to be thrown down. And that is going to bring the first quarter to an end. So after one quarter from Elida High School, the Wapakoneta Redskins have come into town on homecoming and taken a 7-0 lead. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Tonight's first down sponsor is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Our extra point sponsor tonight is TD Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TD Interiors on Allentown Road. So here come the dogs. They try to respond, John. Uh, down seven to nothing. Got the lights on here. The suns went down on a beautiful, crisp fall evening. Hard to believe that uh, October's tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, and it's just, I don't know about you, but September, I just blinked and it was by. over with. Yep. Yeah. So here comes McGew as he's got a man out in the flat. He'll go around the left edge. And he's got some room out there and a nice run by number four, Tyler Carter. The 5'9", 170-pound senior catches the ball, and he's going to get a Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, I really like that play call, bringing Carter out of the backfield and, and running a swing pass and getting him on the edge. And uh, Nice play by Dominic Coli, 5'10", or 5'11", uh, sophomore for uh, Walpaw coming up and making the play. But uh, that's, that's a really momentum getter for the Bulldogs. So here come the Bulldogs. They've got McGew in the gun. They've got Tyler Carter off to his right. Carter's going to get the ball and go around the left side. And he's going to be taken down by Grant Jolly. And he was right there on the spot. Yeah, I mean, what a great play. Jolly's having a fantastic game so far. And, uh, you know, both teams running the ball into the boundary. It's, it's kind of surprising to me. Um, but they're trying to. They're both trying to do the same thing. They're trying to set sure. the line of scrimmage. They're trying to get some momentum and, and saying that, uh, you know, we're going to run the ball and we're going to be effective that way. And. Um, you know, it's, it's it's surprising to me. Wapakoneta gives up uh, defensively. They give 86 yards a game through the air, so kind of stingy with their pass defense. But uh, you know, they also don't give up many points either. So there's another flag. We've got a false start on Elida. Well, uh, defensive coordinator Nick Truesdale for the Redskins. He's he's done this for a long time. Does a fantastic job and. You know, I know Coach Moyer primarily handles the offense, and Coach Truesdale handles the defense. Um, but uh, you know, it's 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 something that when you have two quality coaches leading both sides of the ball like that, and uh, you know, both 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 sides of the ball, you can see how good they are because of great coaching. And John, what's what is the key to getting the? You know, we talk about culture and buy-in. What's your number one assessment of how you get kids to buy into what you want them to do? I think the biggest thing is that you know. It, you, you, uh, you're truthful to them, and what, what you teach them and what you preach to them is true. For example, 
you know, you're not going to tell a kid we're going to win a bunch of games and then you go out and you, you win one or two games. And, you know, you, you don't say that kind of stuff to them, but the things you do sell them on is that, you know, if you work hard, uh, we can make you a better person, we can make you a better player, and you can have success. And the success that starts on the field will bleed into success in life. And I think to me that's, that's what's attractive for kids. They want that. Sure. Inevitably they, they want to have a, a good life ahead of them. And to me, any sport, football, basketball, sure. baseball, um, soccer, volleyball, you know, you get involved in a sport in high school and you learn some of those life traits that can take you to the rest of, to the rest of your life. This is McGee as he goes around the right side. He's being under heavy pressure and he's picked off, picked off by number 24 from the Skins. I think it was number 24. You have to correct yeah, me if we, I'm wrong. Yeah, I don't think we have a 24 on say, the we, roster. We have a 22 and a 23, but no 24 on yeah. the roster, so we apologize. So are they saying that uh, he was out of bounds when he caught the ball? Let's take a look at the instant replay. McGew as he rolls around the right side and must have had a foot out of bounds is all I can Yeah, the on. official immediately came up and said he was uh, it was uh, incomplete. So it must have been uh, out of bounds. What a great play. So that will uh, force Elida into another punt situation. And <coughs> Wapakoneta has Schneider and Jolly back deep. High spiral kick. Jolly's going to field at the 34. He'll take it up. Gets around the left end. He's got some blockers out there. He gets to the left side. He goes up through midfield, and he gets across the 50-yard line. So great field position for the Skins. And just solid. You know, I know Coach uh, Moyer, you know, talked about uh, being uh, – play at a high level, and, and not only on offense and defense, but on special teams as well. And, you know, when, all, when you put all three phases of the game together and you're solid in those three phases, it's always going to put you in a position to win. So the Skins will start at the 48-yard line, first and 10, 9.56. They're up 7 to nothing here on homecoming at Elida High School. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby on the call for you tonight. Probably going to see about eight off tackles in a row here, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> Get used to it. The Moyer takes the snap. He's going to hand to Jace Nows off the left side, and he's going to pick up a big 10 yards. And it looks like he may have a first down. If not, he's really close. Yeah, and, and I think what starts as two, three, four-yard gains becomes six, seven, eight-yard gains. And as the game goes on, you've talked about it a little bit, wearing that defense down, you probably will see a, a, a big one break here. You know, Maybe not this half, but sure. later in the game. So that'll bring up second and one from the 39-yard line. Jason Alves picks up a big nine-yard gain for the Redskins. 9.47 to go here until halftime. Moyer goes under center. He's got two backs behind him. He's going to hand off to the first back, and he's going to be taken down for no gain. Number six, Connor Neckstrop, and he was met by that Elida front four. Yeah, and, you know, Elida's got some some really impressive defensive linemen. We've talked about that, you know, earlier in the season. Uh, one of the guys that I really like is Kevin McGuire, six foot one inch, 310-pound uh, nose guard. I mean, he's, he's got some size there. Yeah, yeah he, he, does. he does a nice job. And Luke Alexander as well, he's a 5'11". 180-pound uh, senior doing a nice job. So, And then we got the two defensive ends that we, we've talked about quite a bit, uh, Torrey Thomas and then uh, obviously Parker Krim. <laughs> Parker Krim, you know, Krim Reaper. There he is. <laughs> and, you know, they, they, they got an impressive front. And it feels, John, like like Wapakonet has a bigger lead. <laughs> I know it's only 7 and nothing. It does. But they've had the ball for, for most of this half. Yeah, and, and if you're Elida, you're, you're – you're getting tired on defense. Sure. You're ready to get your offense on the field. So now off the left side, and here comes a flag, and it looks like that'll be a holding call. Just where the flag was thrown is my guess. Yeah, that might be Ballpark's first penalty. I haven't really seen. Yeah, they're going to get uh, they're going to get the tight end there on a hold. Um, that's their first penalty. It's kind of uncharacteristic of Ballpark. They're well. At the top of the league, and at least the amount of penalties called. So the, obviously, they're a very well coached team. So that one's going to hurt a little bit. That'll bring up first and 20 from the 48 yard line. Walking it up 7 to nothing with 8.59 to go until halftime. And I think they're going to do the same thing here. I don't think you're going to see them open it up and throw deep or anything. I think they got four downs to get a first down. So 
you're going to see some of the same stuff. This is Naus again, and he gets a gain of maybe one or two. He was met immediately in the backfield, but he gets through for a gain of one or two. Very rarely do you see him take a loss. He's a tough back and gets through that first hit. Yeah, and that's a characteristic of a kid that you want in the backfield. Sometimes you have kids back there that maybe they're not the fastest or maybe they're not the strongest, but they're always falling sure. forward. And when you have a kid like that who's, who runs low and can do that, um, you definitely want to find ways to get him the football. Well, you saw Parker Krim on the replay, and he tried to arm tackle him, and that's just not going to work with Jason Nels. No, you're going to have to get low, and you're going to have to wrap, and you're going to have to bring him to the ground. So here comes Moyer under pressure. Gets it out to now. It's a little screen past the left side. He's up the left side. Steps out of bounds. Uh, looked like he was headed right for a first down, but he's going to be about four yards short. I love that play call because he lied a switch to a three-man front, uh, brought in another defensive back, looking for a deep pass play, uh, you know, uh, schematically. And then Walpock runs a, a screen underneath, and it looked like it was going to be a pass. He had receivers running down the field. And just a really nice play call and picked up a nice chunk of yards. And Caleb Moyer, the freshman, he just looks so composed out there. And we talked about it earlier, but yeah, he really is made for that position. And he's probably fearful that he won't get dinner if he doesn't <laughs> play well. Oh. So Moyer's in the gun. He's got Naus to his right. He hands the ball to Naus. He's going to go off tackle, and he's going to be close to a first down, maybe about two yards short. Yeah, and this is this is four down territory here. I mean, you got to lead. Uh, their defense is playing well. Um, this is a, just a really uh, a great opportunity here to, to, to go for it. Now, I said that earlier, and they tried to kick field sure. goal, so maybe yeah. they'll do that as well. So that'll bring up fourth and five from the 33. So the Wapakoneta Redskins basically owning this first half on offense, and, and you got to believe that Elida's defenders are just a little bit tired. You see some of them with their hands on their hips, and they're chugging the water down, and, uh, you know, they, they've got to get something going and keep that defense off the field. Yeah, the, the time of possession is extremely lopsided, and um, Wapak is just, they're just starting to pound them a little bit. And so, you know, when you're, when you're on offense, you got to get those first downs. And, you know, Wapak, they're just, they're, they're getting them. And they're not, they're not like, I don't want to say it, Danny, they're not like uh, just running all over Elida. They're sure, just, no, right, you're you know, right. I mean, it's, it, these are hard yards that they're getting, but you, you're exactly right. You're starting to see guys with their hands on their hips, and it's, it's, starting, to, it's starting to hurt a little bit. Well, Coach Moyer talked tonight about the keys to the game, and he talked to us about taking care of the ball, which they obviously are. He said, let's create a turnover, which they have. Mm -hmm. uh, win the line of scrimmage, which, the, you know, that's that's the most important thing right now, and execute in all three phases. So, you know, that's that, he's practicing what he's preaching. Yeah, so. yeah, and it's and it's a good it's a it's a good game plan. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's nothing fancy. There's no, I mean. We haven't, I, I mean, besides the one pass play, you sure. know, down to Jolly, I mean, it's been pretty much the same thing. I think maybe they've ran five plays total. So here comes the Skins, fourth and one from the 29. This is Moyer. He's going to hand off to Naus, and Naus is going to pick up the first down. Easily picks it up with about a three-yard gain. I really like that play call. They're double tight. They have a wing that they put in motion. Um, and what I liked about it is they had everybody kind of run in one direction. You can see him here, but then he cuts back. And when he cuts back, he's able to put his shoulders down and even spin and get that first down. And I mean, he may have got it by a foot. He didn't get it by much, <laughs> yeah. but he got it. And you John, know? you look what Elida did there. They put seven on the line. They brought the linebackers up yeah. to the line of scrimmage, brought the DBs all the way up <laughs> in the linebacker position yeah. and still don't stop it. No, it's, it's impressive. And, and I'm not saying anything bad about Elida. No, they're playing great. <laughs> they're playing great. <laughs> they're not playing bad at all. So here comes Moyer. He gets the ball. He's looking to his right. He's under pressure. He's going to throw it out of bounds. And he was under pressure by big number 55, Torrey Thomas. And I'd get rid of the ball, too, if that, <laughs> that, that young well, man was Torrey, after me. Torrey Thomas, great player. has been a starter here for several years now and has been an impact player. And I know last year um, uh, – when the, I think I caught this game last year on WSN. Torrey Thomas was one of the key players in this game. But, you know, going back to, uh, to Caleb Moyer, Danny, that is a, that's a junior-senior type of play. Sure. You say, well, yeah. he just threw it out of bounds. I know. He didn't throw it to the other team, though. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So no. he, wasn't, he, he seen the guy wasn't open. He knew exactly collected, what he was doing. Knew, yeah. knew what to do. And, uh, you know, kids sometimes want to make big plays and stuff like that, and it's hard to just throw the ball away. I really, uh, really like that. So here's Moyer, he hands the ball to Naus, and Naus goes off the left side. He breaks tackles, and he is going to walk into the end zone. 
My goodness, John, he broke about three or four tackles, and he gets an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. And that comes from grinding, 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 grinding. That uh, five-yard gain just turned into a big touchdown, and, you know, he broke tackles. They had guys there, you know, they had guys there to, to wrap him up, but look One, how low he is. One, two, three. There's three tackles. There's He runs away from a fourth tackle, a fifth tackle, a sixth tackle, yeah. and he's in the end zone. Pretty running. I'll tell you, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Um, and, and the way he runs, he's low. Did you see how he got his hand on the ground and, 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 and made sure that he didn't fall? It was, it was really beautiful. So they'll set up for the extra point. Our extra point sponsor is TD Interiors. Snap is back. The hold is good. The kick is up, and it is good. So at 6.53 in the second quarter, the Wapakoneta Redskins have taken a 14 to nothing lead here on homecoming at Kraft Stadium. You're watching high school football right here on WOSM. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Our red zone sponsor tonight is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sale approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley's Real Estate is our red zone sponsor. So Elida's got their work cut out for him. Uh, and I, I like what you said, John. They're not playing bad football. They're just they're just worn out on defense right now. And that's kind of where that margin of error comes in. Walpock just makes you play such a perfect game to beat them. And here's a great return for the Bulldogs, and they absolutely needed that. And let me see if we could get a number on that player. I think that's, that was Jackson Cobalt, yeah, number Jackson seven. Yeah, Jackson Cobalt, you're right. Number, or is it number three, David Edscorn? Was it seven? It might have been three. <laughs> we're both Danny, we're showing our age here. You know, we're up kind of high, it and was, it's kind of hard to see. You know, yeah, those, yeah. those right orange here. numbers. That three on his helmet gives sure, it. Gives there you the go. Clue. That's David Edscorn. And look, John, we look at David Edscorn all the time. He's a game breaker. They need to get the ball in that young man's yeah. hands. He's a he's a nice player, and he's a junior who I think's really come along this year and showed uh, great strides on offense sure. and defense. And now you're seeing him do it on special teams. So six fifty four, six forty five to go. Excuse me. Skins lead fourteen to nothing. And Ryan McGue tried to put the ball in number 22, Brady Kirk's hand, and couldn't decide. Did he get tackled? Did the defender McGue, keep the ball right? from moving out of out of uh, McGue's hands? I, I think I think what what you said is correct. I think he couldn't decide. I think yeah. it's a read. He's reading an interior lineman, trying to decide: Am I going to pull it and run, or am I going to give it? And he just kind of ran out of time and was indecisive. Sure. So um, that, I think he just fumbled and, and recovered it. So that'll bring up second and 14 for the Bulldogs. McGue's in the gun. He's got Brady Kirk to his right. He's going to throw down the left side. He's got a man out there, and he was in double coverage, and he was intended target as number seven, Jackson Cobalt. So from one quarterback to another, uh, I think he was hoping Cobalt could make a play because, boy, that would have been a tough Tough proposition being double teamed down that side. Yeah, and, and Walpock has rotated defensively. They've went from having those four down linemen, now they're in a three-man front. So they brought in another DB. Eli is kind of in this position now, Danny, where they have to throw, and sure. they got to throw deep, and they got to score. And Walpock has adjusted to it. And and it's corn, like you said, it double coverage. It's going to be tough to make that play. So here come the dogs on third and 14 from the 36-yard line. Magoo is in the gun. Goes across the middle. He's got a man out there. An excellent catch made by number 12, Keaton Hockey. And he is their leading pass catcher on the year. He's got 21 catches for 288 yards and four touchdowns. And they finally get him in the game plan. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, with a young quarterback, I, I, I don't know if, you know, I don't know how far he is along. Sure. But I think you just kind of have to call plays to certain people right yes. now to say, hey, we need to get Keaton Hawkey involved. He's sure. our top receiver. Yeah. Instead of, you know, having him read the field at this point, you know, getting the ball to your athletes. So we've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 5.33 to go until halftime. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead to light up 14 to nothing. It's homecoming here on WOS. Our premier sponsor for Lida is John Stocker. DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Atta Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. And Webb Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Webb Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. So 
Webb's not been mentioned a lot tonight because the scoreboard's only 14 to nothing. So let's see if the Bulldogs can get back in this. Here's Magoo as he looks across the field. He's being flushed out of the pocket. He'll bring to the left. He's got yardage out there, and he's going to take a tackler head on. And my goodness, I, I got to believe Coach Harmon is going to tell him, son, get out of bounds. Don't take that hit. Yeah, he did a great job of seeing that there's no opening. He took off and he ran. I really liked what Jackson Cobalt did. He's seen that he was running. He turns around. You can see it here on the replay. He's going to block, and he's going to get a nice first down and fall forward, and this is badly needed for yeah. Elida right well, now. Well, look, they're, they're, they're on the – the 43-yard line, and it's the deepest penetration they've had all night. So they got to feel good about themselves, and that's the biggest gain of the night. Yeah, and, and I think you're in this situation now where you're thinking we have to score. I mean, I know there's, there's still five minutes to go, but uh, with Walpock being on the field as much as they have, they have to. So here's Brady Kirk, and he's going to pick up eight tough yards. And all of a sudden, John, the Bulldogs string together 15 yards. Yeah, and I like what they did. They, they've really kind of they kind of spread things out a little bit. And, they, you know, by throwing the ball there earlier, uh, to Keaton Hawkey and then McGew running and now getting the ball to Kirk. Um, we're, we're hearing some different names, and even yes, though we're, right. we're you know, a lot of different guys involved tonight. So that'll bring up second and one from the 34. McGew is <clears throat> in the gun. He's got number three back there with him, David Etzcorn. We talked about him earlier. He's got number seven, Jackson Cobalt, wide to his right, and number 12, Keaton Hawkey to his left. Uh, this is Cobalt, and he slings it back to McGew, who goes down the field into the end zone, guarded by two defenders, and the ball's almost intercepted, and you're going to get a pass interference. Well, I like the play call. A little bit of, of razzle-dazzle there. It looked like a run, and they did uh, running back, uh, get it back to the quarterback, and he was double covered, though. That was the only thing, but it looks like they may catch a break and get say, a pass interference call yeah. here. And I'm going to say something right now, John. Mr. Magoo did not have any trouble slinging that ball 50 yards. No, and, I, you know, and... and, and <laughs> Let's make no bones about it. Losing Larkin Henderson has been a major blow to yeah. the Bulldogs. But uh, I think that you, you can kind of look at what they're going to have in the future here with McGew. He can oh, throw the ball six he foot can. four. And he runs the ball, yeah, too. absolutely. So there's there's some positives here, and you can start to build on his strengths right now. I I, ta I went down to the sidelines tonight, and I talked to uh, Larkin Henderson. He's yep. what, just a fine young man. Yeah. I've talked to him several times this year, asked him how he was doing, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to get back this year. And I said, I hope you get back, son. He, he's just a quality kid. I really yeah, like him. I think they're hoping for week nine or, or somewhere in there, and I'd love to see him get back on the field. Here's Brady Kirk as he goes up the middle. and Boy, you know, going up the middle has been tough sled tonight. They've had their runs on the outside. Yeah, well, I mean, Walpock's just solid inside. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they've got, you know, and I think one of the things that, you know, we really haven't touched on is, is Walpock has an extremely strong wrestling program. Yes. I'm looking at this defensive line, Danny, and I'm not seeing any guy that, that you know, is going to go sure. and eat five cheeseburgers after right. the game. I mean, they look like they are put together yeah. in all of their – a lot of time in the weight room. Yeah, a lot of time in the weight room and a lot of time on the mats, and it looks like they have, four, you know, four or five wrestlers down there on the defensive line. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sale approach, effective marketing campaign, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley Real Estate is our Red Zone sponsor. Here's McGue. He's got Brady Kirk. He's going to go to the left side. He's got a man down there. It's a jump ball, and it looks like a touchdown. you got to be kidding me, John Serby. That might be the catch of the night. Number seven, Jackson Cobalt goes up and brings it down. I'm impressed with Jackson Cobalt. And how about that ball by Ryan McGee? Putting that up there in a one-on-one -on -one cover. And let his man go for let it. Let his man go up, and he got great position. Cobalt, a really nice basketball player, too. He looks like he's going up for a yes, rebound. Yes, you're got exactly it. Boxing right. Boxing him out, getting his hands up, catching at the highest point. And, man, he lied and needed that play. And that is an Allen Davis touchdown. Your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. Allen Davis is our touchdown sponsor. So here comes the extra point kick, and it is up, and it is good. And TD Interiors is our extra point sponsor. So with 3.41 to go, John Zerby, we got a game from Elida High School. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Bulldogs 14-7 here on WOS I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. IC Signs, our instant replay sponsor. Tonight's premier sponsor is Al's Woody's Diner in Wapakoneta. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. 
the premier sponsor for Wapakoneta tonight is Owls Woody's Diner. So, John, a much-needed touchdown for the dogs. Yeah, and, and impressive. I mean, they did a lot of yes. good things, and I think it not only gives them some momentum, but uh, there's some things to build upon there, and, and some, you know, they're using different players like Kirk and Koval and, and Hawkey, getting them involved. And Ryan McHugh, he really impressed me that drive. Yes, he, he did. something that you're looking at going, okay, we can work with this. He was very composed, and I like the fact that he let his receiver go up, and he put the ball in the only place Jackson, and you said it best, Jackson Cobalt kind of screamed the defender yeah. off and got in front yep. of him, and Matt Tabler would be proud how high he <laughs> went up for the rebound. <laughs> yeah, Matt Tabler, I'm, I'm sure he's taking notes here tonight, making sure that <laughs> he's probably sizing up point guards and forwards <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I know Cobalt's a pretty good basketball player too, and and uh, boy, he did a nice job there. So 337 to go here. Don't count the skins out. They're up 14 to seven and they're gonna keep coming. This is Jace Nouse around the left side and he's gonna pick up four big yards. So here come the skins, nothing fancy, just coming straight at you and telling you to match it if you can. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm gonna get back to basketball here, Danny, because yeah. I just like talking sports, but uh, you know, Matt Taylor, what, what a great hire for oh. a year ago. And um, and I know I've he listened to him on your radio show a couple times and I've known Matt over the years. and. Boy, what a great addition. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. He is he is one of the, if not the best coach in Northwest Ohio. I love his passion. I love the way he gets after it, and he cares deeply about what he does and the kids he coaches. And, and you know, he's, he took over in a, in a tough spot here at Elida, but in, you just watch in a couple years, you watch what Elida's program is going to be. It's going oh, to be it's going to be at the top. It's going to be at the you know, top. You're right. Fun. Yep. So here we go, John. It's third and four, and the Bulldogs got a little momentum. They get a stop here from the four. 43, they're going to get the ball back with time to score again. Well, it's nice because their defense got a break. You know, yeah, absolutely. Guys got off the field. Guys got some water, you know, um, and, and they feel a little momentum. They feel like they're in, in reach now. And so, yeah, I mean, th this has really turned into a nice game. Put your coach's hat on, John. Third and four from the 45. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think you're still going off tackle with Naus. I mean, I just think he's the one that you, you, he scored so far, and he's, he's done a great job, and I don't think you get too fancy here. So Moyer's in the gun. He's got Naus off to his left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to give the ball. No, he's going to keep it himself, and he's going to go to the outside receiver, and they're going to stop it, John. The, the reception was made by number eight, Will Campbell, but the DB from Elida, number 22, Brady Kirk, comes up and does a great job of stopping the play. Oh, huge defensive stop right here, and I love what – watch Tyler Carter. Tyler Carter, Carter excuse yeah. me. I said Brady Kirk, Tyler Carter, you get the credit, buddy. What a great job of, of – running through the block and then making the play, and what a momentum shift. Oh, I mean, my goodness. This game has completely changed in the last five minutes, and, you know, you even hear the Elida fan, yeah, fans ringing the bell sure. and all that kind of stuff, and now Elida's going to get a chance here right before half to, to get a shot at the end zone. And, John, this thing was ho-hum, ho-hum for, for a quarter and a half, and now all of a sudden here come the dogs on homecoming. Well, there, you know, when you're at the top of the league like Walpock is, everybody's going to come after you, and uh, you can see the, the Bulldogs are starting to gain that momentum, and, you know, Walpock's been through this meat grinder, but they're going to have to hold on here to, to try to get a win tonight. So that ball's going to go down to the 14-yard line, and with 1.48 to go, and really it kind of sets Walpock up in their wheelhouse because now, or excuse me, Elida, because now they can let Ryan McHugh sit back there and throw the ball a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, you, you can do some different things, and I think that, uh, you know, one of the things you got to be careful in this in this situation is not to turn the ball over. What you don't want to do is give you have the momentum. So I hate to say the play the card of well, let's just get to halftime. But no, but, but but I think you do have to try to absolutely. throw the ball down the field a little bit here and get some yards. But, uh, no, I would not be upset if if Coach Harmon would be conservative here. He's got the momentum. I mean, yep. he's only down seven, so he's going to give the ball off to Tyler Carter. Tyler Carter tries to go off of the left side and he's taken down by the Redskins. Yeah, and, and, and Elida, I mean, they got to feel good. I mean, they've got to feel really good about themselves right now and, and what they're doing. Um, and, and defensively, I'm, I'm, I, like we said earlier, I mean, they, they really have two big plays, and, and, and that's all they've given up. You know, Walpox just nickel and dimed them the whole night. But uh, but uh, the going into halftime with a, with a down 14-7 would be a, a good uplift for the Bulldogs. So here we go, second and seven from the 17-yard line. Ryan McGew is in the gun. He's got Tyler Carter off to his right. He's got two receivers split out wide right. McGew takes the snap. He's going to give to Tyler Carter up the middle. 
and uh, they are going to play a conservative here. And uh, I guess I don't blame him. Uh, you know, let's now Wapakoneta is going to start using some timeouts, <laughs> and now we've got a chess match here, John. Yeah. Because Wapakoneta knows. <laughs> They're going to have to punt from deep in their own and maybe, yeah, maybe force them. So yeah. we're going to take a break here. 54 seconds to go. Up and is up 14 to 7 from Craft Field at Atlanta High School. Tonight's first call of the quarter is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Our first down sponsor tonight is Citizens National Bank. See how we're building businesses one relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. Citizens National Bank is our first down sponsor. All right, Coach, third and seven from the 17. You're playing it, playing it conservative here. You're going to air it out a little well, bit. Well, with Walpaw calling timeouts here, I think you got to play it conservative. Now, they have an empty backfield, so they're not going to. So here's but, Magoo uh, in the gun. He goes across the middle. Oh, most out of the reach of number 12, Keaton Hockey. And the throw was offline just a little bit. So that's going to bring up a fourth down. And exactly what Wapakoneta wanted to happen is going to force Elida into a punt deep in their own territory. And it was a great play call. He sure was, was open. I mean, he just uh, just uh, underthrew it a little bit. And, uh, Hawkey was open, and that would have been a first down. So that one is a little bit costly. The special teams play here is going to be pivotal to see how that, the half ends. So, again, he's got Jordan Schneider and Grant Jolly deep. Both of them are home run threats for the skins. And that ball was almost batted down. And this is Jolly with the – with the punt here as he goes up the side and he gets back up to about the 43. So great field position with 40 seconds to go. Yeah, great field position. Um, and they've got two timeouts left. So, uh, But Eli did a nice job special teams-wise getting down there making a play. And now you have this situation where, you know, Walpock really hasn't hasn't uh, thrown the ball downfield much once. Sure. And so they're going to kind of have to come out of their comfort zone a little bit and see with 40 seconds to go what they're going to do in this situation. So here we go, 40 seconds to go until halftime. Wapakoneta leads 14 to 7. Caleb Moyer will bring him to the line of scrimmage. He's got Jace Naus off to his right. He's got Jolly on his left and Schneider on his right. He's going to hand the ball to Naus off the left side, be taken down immediately for a gain of about one yard. And they're going to let the clock continue to run, although they're going to no huddle and get up to the line of scrimmage as quick as they can, possibly trying to get a field goal here to extend that lead. Well, we've seen earlier that their kicker has a leg. If you can get him in position, he can take a shot. So here's Moyer in the gun. He's going to keep it himself. He goes right up the middle, and he's going to get a gain of about three or four yards, and that's going to make another timeout with 17 seconds to go. All right, so we're going to take a timeout in the booth. We're watching high school football here on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto home business insurance and more. And after that touchdown, we've got extra points in our extra point sponsor tonight, brought to you by TD Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TD Interiors on Allentown Road. So here come the Redskins. Moyers in the gun. He steps up in the pocket, throws off to his right. He's got Naus out in the flat. He's going to take the ball up to about the 25-yard line, and they're going to say he was down. The ball bounced up, and Brady Kirk bounced on it immediately, but that's where it's going to be taken down at. And I think at this point you are in field goal position, Danny. I, I think that, Yeah, I uh, think you're right. I mean, the, the kicker's got a leg, and he's got enough. Yeah, I'll take a look at this play here. and Great job by Moyer stepping up in the pocket. His awareness is fantastic. Gets it out to the receiver goes down and oh oh you know what that ball was coming out before he hit the ground um we can we take another shot of that yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. I think uh, coach right, what do you think they're going to show us again here when they rewind it and it looked like the ball was coming out before he hit the ground do we need to go call new york and <laughs> see what they say take a look at this yeah i think you're right it looks like it was kind of coming. oh loose my there. goodness and that is huge that's a big that's a big turnaround where's here. the red challenge <laughs> I, I, coach Harmon needs to get one of those even Absolutely. if they can't use it throw it anyway well you know? look we got our crew does a fantastic yeah. job awesome and, job uh, i see signs is our instant replay sponsor tonight so we're gonna get a field goal try here from let's see john from about 34 yards out this was seven seconds to go and the light is going to take a time out and uh, you suppose coach Harmon wants the officials to review what they can't review yeah and he probably <laughs> wants the kicker to think about it a little sure, bit too absolutely. so it was a, that's a good timeout. 
And, uh, yeah, you know, great job by our crew. I, I want to oh echo that goodness. as well. We, we have a great crew here, and that was awesome to see, you know, just that little bit there. And um, But, uh, you know, Elida, you got to feel good. you got to feel good right now. you got to feel like you're in the game, you're, you're competing. And Walpock, you know, they're, they're kind of, you know, at this situation where if they can punch this in here, they're, they're doing a nice job as well. Yeah, and you take a look. It's a 34-yard field goal, John, and if they miss it, if you're Elida, you've got to be ecstatic going mm -hmm. into the half knowing you've only given up two scores, and they both came in the first quarter, and here you go. Now, if you're Wapak and you get that, that's a huge boost going yep. up 10. Yep, absolutely. And, and the thing is, is you know, Wapak's going to get the ball in the second half, so you know, if they get a field goal here and go into halftime at, by, up by 10, it'll be, a, it'll be a confidence boost. So another timeout by Coach Harmon, and he's not going to leave any on the board, and I don't blame him. He wants this young man to think about this. What's your thoughts on that, Coach? You've been in this situation. Um, you know, I think I think it's a good idea. Uh, you know, as a coach, I, I sometimes, you know, um, I hated it when coaches did that to us, <laughs> and then you turn sure. around and do that to them. But, um, yeah, I mean. You, you see it in basketball, yeah, too, you when the kid's yeah. on the free throw line. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's a – let's take a look at – Oh, sorry. Our, tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I apologize for that. I've got a list of all of our sponsors over here, and I had to find it. It was about 38th on the list of 120, <laughs> which is great. And that's awesome. And, Danny, none of us are professional anyway at this, right? So I we're know. just we're just talking, having fun, that's enjoying right. football. You do an awesome job, well, by the way. You, you make it easy on me. That. So here comes the big field goal attempt from 34 yards out. The snap is back. The hold is up. The kick is on its way, and it is no good. Wow. My goodness, wow. John. I thought it he had good. it. It yeah. looked good. It, it looked really <laughs> and, and good. I was watching on the screen, and I thought he cleared that, and apparently it fell short. So a missed field goal attempt with two seconds to go, and if you're Lydie, you dodged a bullet there, yeah. and you got to tell your kids. Hey, we're in this, fellas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're down one score. You've scored at the end of the half. You've, uh, you know, their kicking game is uh, right now. Not, I wouldn't say suspect, but sure. they're, they're having, they're struggling to get points uh, through the kicking game. And you're going to go into halftime, and you're going to tell your kids, listen, we're we're one we're right score in down, absolutely. Uh, and, and the you know this team is in the driver's seat for the league title. So, so playing McHugh well is going to take the snap, and he will automatically take a knee, and that is what he will do. So after one half from Kraft Field here at Elida High School on homecoming night, the Wapakoneta Redskins go to the half, leading the Elida Bulldogs 14 to seven. When we come back, we'll have second half action. You're watching high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to Kraft Stadium, where it's halftime. And we delight a 14 to 7. Tonight's halftime adjustment is brought to you by Laux Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Laux Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. Our halftime adjustment is sponsored by Laux Chiropractic. And, John, let's take a look for the visitors, the Wapakoneta Redskins. What do they need to do to capitalize on the momentum they lost in the first half? Well, you look back at the keys of the game, I think they've done – they've taken care of the ball. Um, they, they've, they've tried to create turnovers. They haven't probably had the turnovers they thought that they would defensively. But one of the things I think that they're going to have to start doing is winning that line of scrimmage. I, I think it's a draw right now. I think I, you're right. I, I, yeah, don't, yeah. I don't think that they're they're um, uh, they are moving the ball, but I don't think they're dominating on on both sides of the ball uh, you know, on the line of scrimmage. But I do think they're playing, a, a, doing a great job in all three phases of the game. So I think if you're Walpock, you really don't panic. You just kind of stick with the script. Come back out and <laughs> do what so you do. They're so good at what they do. Yeah, You're right. and, and I think things will fall in place for them. And for the Elida Bulldogs, John, you saw the first half. Well, the first half, one and a half of that yeah. first half was dominated by Wapak, but Elida just stole the momentum in the second or the second quarter. What do they need to do to continue that mo? Yeah, I think that the, that whatever they were doing there at the end of the second quarter is what they want to do, but. The margin of error is small, so they uh, cannot have point. they cannot have turnovers. You know they cannot have a pick, um, but we have seen them throw the ball effectively, which is what we talked about before the game. Continuing to throw the ball, and they've matched Wapak's physicality. So you know I think Elida is they're onto something, and I think we're really going to have an exciting second half here. You know, John, it's such a clean game so far. You know you haven't seen a lot of 
uh, chippy penalties and uh, guys, you know, slapping at each other and, and getting in each other's faces. And there's a lot of respect down on that field for these two teams. Well, and that comes from two coaches who, who are disciplined coaches. I oh, mean, these guys. You know, you see them. They get up. They help each other up. I don't. I, I love not seeing showboating. I mean, oh, it's I, great yeah. to celebrate with your sure, teammates. Sure. But there's no self proclamations here. It is go celebrate with your team. And you're right. This is clean. Both the communities are supporting their teams, and it's it's a lot of fun. So we mentioned it in the first half. We're going to mention it again in the second half, John. we got a king and a queen tonight. Yeah. And uh, you've got those names for tonight yeah. for homecoming here. For Elida, their king was Grant Hardeman. He's a kicker out here, senior soccer player. Great job. And uh, Miss Elida Rose is Peyton Kuhn. We'll talk about her a little bit. And she's an athlete playing some different sports here. And congratulations to both of them. Absolutely. And here comes Wapakoneta. They'll bring the ball up to about the 39-yard line. That's where they'll take over. And your family was also represented tonight. Let's yeah. talk about her a little yeah, bit. Yeah, my niece, Olivia Bittner, was uh, on homecoming court, and uh, she looked beautiful, and she's a special young lady. We're awfully proud of her, and uh, my brother-in-law is sitting over there running the scoreboard. So this is kind of a homecoming for me as well, and family was here watching her, and we're very proud of her. So I, I said it earlier, walking around Elida with you tonight is like walking around with a politician. Everybody <laughs> wants a piece of John Zerby. Glad handing you, kissing babies. It was incredible. I, I don't think it was that, Danny, <laughs> but uh, it's nice to be home and see some, some, some familiar faces. <laughs> so here comes Caleb Moyer in the skins. He's going to give the ball off to Jace Naus, which he did a lot in the first oh, half, and a great job by that Elida front for Big Parker Krim as he stops the momentum there, brings yeah. up second and nine. You know, we, we've talked about him a lot in the, the first game against OG, but how exciting is that going to be to watch him over the next three or four years just progress and get better and better and better? And, well, John, um, you, you look at both sides of the ball. You've got a, a freshman uh, defensive end in Krim, and then you've got a sophomore quarterback, and uh, things are looking really bright for you. Yeah, I know Elida's freshman class is the class that they're kind of counting on here for the future that they have a lot of uh, high expectations for. So here comes Naus again off the left side, and we're going to get a penalty, and he got a nice hole there, and we're probably going to get a hold where that punt was called. So not a great start for, for the Wapakoneta Redskins, and that's exactly what it is, is a hold on the outside. And, you know, they, they were – Pretty, pretty much penalty free in the first half. I think that there was one penalty for holding uh, late in the first half. And, you know, that's something that's uh, not typical of Walpock. And to be honest with you, I, I didn't see a hold, but, um, you know, my eyes have deceived me before. So, uh, you know, that's a really a, a big break for the Bulldogs early. So we talk a little bit uh, about Elida's quarterback situation and Larkin Henderson. I want to mention a, a shout out to that young man. He's uh, battling through a injury. He's a three-year starter. He is a solid young man. I've talked to him several times this year, and uh, he's just a good all-around kid, and I wish him the best of luck. Yeah, it comes from a great family. Mom and dad are really, really good people, and, uh, you know, it's been fun to watch him. We're just really pulling for him, hoping he can get back on the field and finish his senior year. This is Naus again, and again, tracked down by that Elida defense, and that's going to bring up third and 14. And, John, when you're Wapakoneta and you don't air the ball out, third and 14 is a big down. Well, and this is something that you're not typically used to, to be in this kind of situation, so you're now going to have to do something offensively that you don't do a lot. And um, and that's, as a coach, it's kind of scary because you practice this stuff, sure. but, but it's not your bread and butter. So it's a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit scary to see, you know, to, to go to these passing situations. So here comes Caleb Moyer. He's in the gun. He's got two to the left and one to the right. He's... In pursuit, he throws across the middle. He's got a man out there, and that's Schneider on the or Jolly, excuse me, on the reception, and that's going to come well short of a first down and bring up fourth in about ten, uh, well eight maybe. Uh, let's see what they do here. Yeah, they're going to have to punt, yeah. and what a great defensive stop. But I love that Tory Thomas, Parker Krim, chasing Moyer down. Right. He did a nice job of getting rid of it. Uh, but it just was not enough. But, you know, that penalty really is what cost them because that would have been enough for a first down without that penalty. So the ever-dangerous David Etzcorn is back deep, and the light of faith would love to see that young man break one as Wapakoneta is in punt formation. And I think for Wapak here, you're wanting to get uh, a great special teams uh, play here so you can get good field position. Here comes Etzcorn. He feels it. He bobbles a little bit. He gets away from the first defender. He goes to the right and taken down in a great shoestring tackle out there by number 22 for the Skins, and that is Corbin Mitchell. Great job by the senior running back, 5'10", 165 pounder. Yeah, and I think if you're, you know, on a, on a punt return, you're just wanting your returner to field it and to not fumble or to not lose yards, and Edsburn did a nice job. There's really not a lot of blocking, and he just kind of created something, and 
you know, it gives Elite a decent field position. But um, like you said earlier, I mean, this is this is the, the tide has changed. I mean, Elite has really got an opportunity here to strike. John Stocker, DDS, is tonight's premier sponsor for the Ida Bulldogs, provi providing dental care for high school sports fans. Dr. John Stocker is the premier sponsor for Elida. So here comes Ryan Magoo in the Elida offense. Magoo keeps it himself, going to run up the middle, pick up maybe a yard to two. Uh, that Wapakin at the front was really tough. And I think that I think there was a bust there. I think uh, you're maybe, right. Yeah. Maybe watching the replay here, it looked like uh, maybe the center and the quarterback went, and everybody else kind of just stood there, and uh, it looked like there was some confusion. But uh, Magoo picked up a, uh, a couple yards, didn't lose yards, which is a good thing, but uh, kind of puts him in a tough spot with second nine. Second nine, eight fifty one to go here on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Wapakin had the leads fourteen to seven. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Kraft Stadium, and Elida. McGew throws to the right side. He's got a man. Oh, and just off the shoulder pads. And that was number 12 out there for the dogs, Keaton Hockey. And that young man doesn't drop many. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And it just, you know, the, the old adage, he was just kind of looking downfield before he, he had actually caught it. But uh, I like the play call. I, I like the yeah. I like the ball, too. I mean, he was a nice ball thrown. And um, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing tonight that I like from Ryan McGill. So third and nine from the 28-yard line, 8.40 to go here in the third quarter. Wapakoneta leads 14-7. to Wapakoneta trying to keep that grip on first place. They lead the league by one game over Van Wert. Here comes McGill in the gun. Looks off to the right. He's going to be taken down and sacked in a big sack by number six. We've called his name all night, Connor Mextra. Yeah, he's impressive. And and really, that's just like a delayed blitz. Uh, they didn't bring him at first, and, and they brought him a little bit later. And those are sometimes tough to pick up because they're not right away. And you can see him come clear here at the end. And McGew goes down, and Mextra makes a huge play for the Walpock defense. Now I'm going to give McGew some credit. He didn't try to throw the ball away. He did yep. tuck it under. He took the sack, and they lived to fight again. Yeah, and that's smart. I mean, you have to do that. You don't want to try to throw the ball downfield because you're going to get hit and then end up having a pick. So a great job. So almost, and there's a flag coming out, and that is going to be on uh, – Wapakoneta as they rough the kicker. Now we're going to see if that's running into or if that is a personal foul. Let's see what they call here. And that would be a tough break for Walpock if that is a personal foul. And it, it is. is. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's going to give Eli to that, that momentum here, and it's going to give them not only uh, some momentum, it's going to really put them in a great field position. <laughs> it, is. it is. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, 15 yards. We also have Sideline warning against Elida. No yardage. First down. So a personal foul and a sideline warning against Elida. I did not see that. Uh, they got a little excited, I think, John. <laughs> well, they got a good reason to be. You know, sure. I hate the sideline uh, so warning rule. So it just, it's. I know, I know it has its place, obviously, but you know, you get people excited and celebrating a little well, bit. I don't like it called you know, against me either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, John, you're saying it's a good call unless it's against you. And yeah, you're, exactly, yeah. exactly. As long as it's on the other team, I'm good with it. <laughs> well, I've never heard that from a coach, but uh, thoughts to live by by Dr. John Zerby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. First and ten as Elida gets a big break. Ryan Magoo's in the gun. He's got a man in motion. That was Ed Scorn. Magoo goes back to pass. He's going to go deep down the sidelines. He's got a man out there. Oh, my goodness, just out of the outstretched arms of Jackson Cobalt. But there's another flag, John. Wow. Uh, you know, and, and that's a tough call because I think all the guys are going for the football. And, and, and he kind of was underthrown. Cobalt had him beat. He had both those guys beat. Yeah, walk us through this replay here. Yeah, so you see McGew here and you see Cobalt. He's running inside, then he's going back outside. He's double covered, but he's got both guys beat. It's just underthrown. And I think probably the issue is that they didn't turn back. You know, their their backs are to the ball, and that's going to be 15 more yards. You know, Walpock, we, we, we've talked about it earlier, you know, they, they typically play a fundamentally clean game. And immediately here in the second half, Danny, he got three penalties yeah. that are really hurting them right now. And, John, that is as far a, a toss as I've seen this year in high school football. Yeah. He, he put that 60 yards in the air. And that young man as a sophomore can really sling the pigskin. Well, and you're seeing Coach Harmon gain a little confidence yes. in him too. Yeah, now absolutely. you're starting to see the ball being thrown a little bit more and, and letting the, 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 the play go into his hands. And it's fun to watch. So this is Brady Kirk gets the handoff. And that was kind of blown up by his own man. He ran into the back of his uh, lead blocker there. It looked Brady like to me we'll take a look at this. Uh, but Brady, uh, <laughs> he yeah. got nowhere on that one. Yeah, and I, and I think there's, again, I think, 
a lot of times, a lot of Elida's offense is read-based, kind of the RPOs that you hear about, and uh, and and they're reading and, and trying to get the handoff. And by the time he did, he has a, a defender in the backfield. Yeah, Jaden Rampula, the uh, 5'10 junior, uh, blew that play up as he uh, got into the interior of that line and really messed everything up. So. Magoo's in the shotgun. He's got a back there. He's going to hand the ball off to the back. This is Brady Kirk as he tries to get around the left side. And he's going to pick up three or four tough yards. I, I like the call. I like the call. You know, what we've seen Elida try to do up the middle hasn't been very successful. But on the edge, they are getting some yards. And now you've got third and maybe six, and you're past midfield. So I think you can be aggressive here on this play call. So here's Elida, John, and they're hanging around. They're just hanging around, but uh, the momentum seems to be on their side. They've got to execute here. They've got a couple lucky breaks, and uh, here we go across midfield. Yeah, and I think if you're Walpock, you don't want Elida to have this momentum. So here's McGew. He looks across the field. He's got a man out. Oh, just through Keaton Hockey's hands, and he was wide open, and that would have been a clear first down. It's too bad because we've seen that play a couple times tonight, and uh, it's been open, and uh, the ball's been on, on target, and uh, it didn't work out. And looks like Elida's going to go ahead and punt here, which is, is probably a good idea. Well, their defense is playing well. Yep. So Keaton Hockey is having a tough night tonight, John. And, and could it be that that ball's getting out of uh, uh, the hands a little quicker because uh, you see McGew with that strong arm. He's got zip on it, doesn't yes, he? he does. Uh, I've heard he's a really good pitcher, too, on the baseball team. So uh, there's a little bit of zip on that ball for sure. So there's the punt. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 23-yard line, and that's where Wapakoneta will take over with 6.18 to go in the third quarter, leading 14-7. to So Wapakoneta is alone in first place right now in the WBL. Van Wert right behind them. And we talked earlier, John, about that game and, and the crazy ending and maybe the game of the year in West Central Ohio. Well, and, you know, you know, I, neither of us were at that game, right, and, and right. so you're you're following it on Twitter or whatever. You know, WSN scores, and you're seeing Van Ward up early, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> towards the end, it's like Walpock. You're like, oh, they're coming back. You know, <laughs> boom, they win. You know, it's just such a remarkable win. Uh, so here's Caleb Moyer. He's going to keep it himself as he goes around the uh, left end, and he is taken down for a gain of about two. And you saw that coming from a mile away. Uh, Elida just shoved him out of bounds a little too hard. Well, and you're in a dangerous spot. You're on the visitor sideline, and typically what they do is when you when you go out of bounds like that, any extra contact or is going to be called. It's going to be unnecessary. And they had him wrapped up, and uh, yeah, took him down just a little too hard. So Brady Kirk is the violator on that play. So. I don't think Brady Kirk had any ill will or intentions. He just no. got carried away in the play and it extended over to the out of bounds line. Just playing hard and sure. you know not really not realizing where he was, but uh, big break for Walpaw because uh, you know they've had uh, several big penalties called on them, so now they get a little bit of momentum and a, and a great start here. So we look at Caleb Moyer. We talked about his passing numbers this year and his rushing statistics, 133 yards and three touchdowns. So when they get down in the red zone, they do count on him to find that pay dirt. So this is Moyer in the gun. He's going to keep it himself, go off the right side. He's going to pick up about four yards. And that's going to bring up second and six from about the 44-yard line. And I think, you know, Moyer being a freshman, you know, a lot of the offense is, is not going to run through him at this point. But, you're, you know, from what we've seen, a lot of it does. <laughs> they, you know what I mean? It, they it, have a lot of confidence in that. Yeah, they sure there. do. And, um, and and they should because he's a really nice player. So they have a ton of weapons. But, you know, I really like to, like what he does on his, uh, on his feet and then through the air as well. So here come the skins. They're going to have Moyer under center. They've got two backs to his left. They're going to hand off to Jace Noss as he goes off the left side. He's going to pick up another Citizens National Bank first down. And, John, let's talk about this. Those wins earlier in the year for Wapakoneta against Van Wert on the last play of the game and against St. Mary's in overtime, does it come into play here? I think so because I, I think in, in two ways, Danny. Number one, um, let's be honest. It's hard to get up for a game like this sure. because, sure. you know, you, you've been winning. You've, you, you're exhausted. You've, yeah, you've, you've won games at the wire, games in overtime, and now you, this is called a letdown game, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to improve. As a coach, you want to continue to improve. And so you've got to really convince your kids that they've got to come out here and give a great effort and continue to get better this week. So here comes Jason Noss again off the right side. 
And he's going to pick up about six yards. That's going to bring up a third and four, maybe? I, I like what Walpock's doing. Second and four, excuse me. Um, and the, the Walpock faithful will not like what I'm going to say here, but <laughs> it's boring football, but it's great it's, fundamental. It's I mean, yeah. it's effective, and, and they're just kind of taking away all the bells and whistles right now. <laughs> let's just run the ball. Let's just get yards. Let's get the game back in our hands, and, um, you know, you're now seeing them move the ball down the field. And, John, I love the formation right there. You mm -hmm. saw what they did. They had a single set back in Naus, but they had trips to the left, and they forced that defense to widen up, That's and it's mano a mano. And, and in most uh, schemes defensively, you do not cover the quarterback. Now, that's changed over the years with all the RPO stuff, but, um, you know, having more you run the ball now as a runner is a real threat. So we got a young man down. We've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching high school football on WLS. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaigns, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. Binkley's is our Red Zone sponsor. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Web Insurance is our scoreboard sponsor. So we look at the Web Insurance scoreboard. It is third and one from the 41. Wapakoneta leads 14 to seven. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Kraft Stadium, and we've got a timeout. timeout. <laughs> our, speaking of timeouts, our timeout sponsors brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. All right. Let's take a look at some programming notes this weekend on WSN. Saturday at 6.30, it's Macomb and Arlington, a big BBC showdown, John. Saturday at 9, Shawnee, Van Wert, and Sunday at 6, the Crestview Night Invitational Volleyball Tournament. Also, we've got Spencerville and Temple Christian in girls volleyball, Bluffton in Grove in girls soccer Wednesday at 8, and Friday from at 3.30, it's Kenton. Soccer. Kenton's got a great soccer program yeah, this year. Next weekend, Friday, New Bremen and Coldwater. Friday, Crestview, Spencerville. And Saturday, Ottawa, Glendorf, Shawnee. Three great football games that you need to catch on WOSN. So, John, we <laughs> explain to me here, we had a timeout. You come out, you get another timeout. What, 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 <laughs> what happened? Well, I, I Not think. Not that you know, but. <laughs> well, I, I think. We'll, the, Eli, has, Eli had called the timeout. I think that there's probably some personnel issues sure. or something going on where uh, they're, they're trying to get some schematic stuff figured out, and they didn't have it figured out. The, the bad part about when there's a player timeout, you really can't talk to your kids much. Right, so, right. so really the coaches are probably seeing that they needed to still uh, communicate something to their kids, so they went ahead and burned a timeout. So 3.52 to go here in the third quarter. Wapakoneta leads 14-7. to seven. Big WBL showdown. This is Moyer in the gun. He's got a man in motion from left to right. Moyer's going to keep it himself. And I love that play, John, where he was led up through the hole by number six, Connor Mextroth, and he just followed him right on his yeah, hip. Yeah, that is what football coaches call power. And, 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 and that play is simply you've got double tight ends. Your, your linemen are blocking down. You're going to have uh, your fullback kick out. Yes. And then you're going to have a guard lead through. And what's cool about it is it just looks fancy because they're in the shotgun and the quarterback's <laughs> right. doing it. But, right. but it's no different than, you know, watching the Green Bay Packers do it in the 60s. Not that either <laughs> me or you were there watching that. <laughs> right, I wasn't. That, that brings up another Citizens National first down. So here come the skins at first down. This is Jace Naus going off the yeah, right side, being pushed by his lineman. And, John, we talked about this earlier. Uh, we look across the field. <laughs> this is the second game you and I have worked where the construction crew theme is in the student <laughs> section. And if Jake, if we get a shot of that construction crew, there's about 150 kids over there that are just decked out in neon construction crews. <laughs> we, we commented off air that there's somebody missing a bunch of uh, uh, vests uh, around right. the, the construction sites right now. So Jace now goes off the left side and just about takes it into the end zone. And he gets a huge gain for the Redskins, and that's going to set them up on first down in the Binkley Real Estate red zone. There was a conversation on that sideline that went something yeah, like this. We need to get back to power football. Yeah. We need to get after it. Yeah. And we're not going to be fancy. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to run trick plays or anything nope. like that. We're coming at them. And uh, they have responded. You're absolutely right. So here we go. First and goal from the four-yard line. Wapakoneta looks to go up two Yay. touchdowns here. This is Moyer. He's in the gun. 
He's got a single back to his left. He's got wide outs on the right and the left. This is Moyer. He's going to keep it himself. Tries to get in from the side and take it down. And a great open field tackle by Tyler Carter. And that young man has made some game changers tonight. Yeah, and you know, I think, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see the replay. I think the hole's there. Yes, um, you're right. And, and I think he bounced oh, it, and Tyler man. Carter's there waiting for that to contain and did a great job of uh, uh, stopping that touchdown. So one of two things here. Wapakoneta can go up two touchdowns if they take it in here. And, boy, John, if Elida holds here, what a momentum shift that would be. Yeah, and it's it's kind of do or die for Elida right now just because of the way that the game's going and how slow, um, how Wapak has slowed the game down. This is a big play. Yeah, they've got Jace Nows and Connor Mextroth behind Moyer. They're going to give it to Jace Nows. A little confusion, and Parker Krim comes in. The Krim Reaper cleans it up, John. Oh, uh, what a play. And he, he came <laughs> through there right away. I don't – I'm not sure he was blocked at all, or, or maybe he just blew up his blocker. It'll be interesting to see on the replay, but there was some confusion in the backfield for Walpock too, yeah, and you can see him come right through. Oh, he just blew up his blocker, and what John, a great play. Yeah, who else, other than, I mean, during Halloween season, who else but the Prim Reaper, right? <laughs> i tell you what. He's going to do the monster match. That's right. There you go. You're <laughs> going to give him all kinds of cues know, for the next, right. you know, months yeah. here. And my wife's going to tell me when I get home, stop with the corny puns. <laughs> they're just they're silly. They're great, Danny. Don't stop, please. <laughs> So here comes Wapakoneta, third and eight from the eight-yard line. This is Moyer as he rolls to his right. He's looking across the field. He's under heavy pursuit. He's going to throw it into the back of the end zone, and he overthrows the target. And Big really, stop. Yeah, the only choice he had, and a huge stop for Parker Krim and the Elida defense. And, you know, you kind of talked about it just a few minutes ago, Danny, how big that would be for Elida. And, and – Walpock may get a field goal here, but I still think that's a big that's a huge win. That's Absolutely. a huge win for Elida because it still gives them an opportunity to score and put themselves in, in position. Well, we saw kicking trouble tonight. Now, we know the young man for Elida has the, the strength in the leg to do this. Yep. Uh, so let's just see what happens here. This is number nine, Kyle Beach, as he tries to tack on three here for the Redskins. It's about a 18-yard field goal. Kick is up. And it is no good. No good. Wow. You want to talk about a win-win for the Elida Bulldogs. And, John, here they go again. They're still in this game. Absolutely. And I think, if you know, at the end of this game, if you're going to talk about what's been a game changer, and it's been special teams. And you hate to, you know, say that, you know, the, the missed field goals have cost Walpock, but it's cost them nine points right now. It has. And, um, you know, for Elida, they've just hung around, and every time that they do have a missed field goal, they're, they're still in the game. So great uh, stop for the Bulldogs, and uh, Walpock coming out of there with zero points has really got to be discouraging for them. Tonight's premier sponsor for Wapak and Ed is Owl's Woody's Diner in Wapak. Wapak's best place for pizza, wings, subs, and burgers. Call 419-738-9111. And on the other side of the field, the premier sponsor for the Ed Bulldogs is John Stocker DDS, providing dental care for high school sports fans everywhere. Dr. John Stocker is our premier sponsor for the Ed Bulldogs. So here come the dogs as <clears throat> Ryan Magoo is in the shotgun. He's got a single set back. He's going to roll out to his right. He's looking downfield. He's going long across the middle. He's got a man out there, and he's got a reception made at the 50-yard line. And no one else but number seven, Jackson Cobalt, who's really done a great job tonight. Well, and I think Cobalt is really starting to establish himself as a as deep go -to, threat. Yeah, yeah go-to deep threat. Um, he's got great size. He runs great routes. He's got great positioning. I really love the play call where you're rolling to the right, you're setting him up, and you're coming back across the field uh, against single coverage, and what a fantastic play there. Well, Ryan Magoo, John, stayed in there and took a massive shot from Jaden Rampula, and he never flinched. He got right back up. Oh, he's right back at it and watch him come at him again. So here come the dogs. This is Brady Kirk, and you're going to get a holding call there because that was right in the middle of that line, and a nice six-yard gain is going to be negated, and it's holding on the dogs. And those holding penalties, I think you, you can hear the Walpock faithful say thank you, finally. <laughs> yeah, like, finally, hey, you know, yeah. we've been calling them on us tonight. and Sure. Uh, you know, so the penalties have really hurt both teams. Any kind of momentum that we start to see happen, sure. these have been drive killers. John, this Wapak defense is really good. I mean, I mean, I've watched them all year long. Don't get me wrong. This is my first time seeing them in person, and they are really good defensively. Well, they're they're athletic, they're fast, but they're well coached. I mean, and they know their scheme, and that's what I like watching them is because they know what they're doing. They just they fly to the ball. 
So there's another pass across the middle and a nice scoop by Keaton Hockey. And they're going to say that was a catch. Let's take a look at that replay because that was awful close. And our replay, hey, we got the best replay That's right. crew in the business. So here come the throw. And boy, that was close. That close. was close. It looks like he, maybe his hands were underneath of it. Yep. The officials say it was a catch. So uh, that's going to end the third quarter. So we've got high drama here from Kraft Field on homecoming. The Wapakoneta Redskins lead the Atlanta Bulldogs 14-7. But here come the dogs. You're watching High School Sports on WSN. Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. IC Signs is our instant replay sponsor. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Lee's Famous Recipe is the first call of the quarter. So here come the dogs. They flip the script here. They're going the other way. And they've got the ball second 10 on the 49. Magoo is back. He's looking across the field. He's under heavy pressure. He rolls out to his left. He's going to throw it away, and a nice play by that young man. That was a coverage play right there. Absolutely, and Walpock did a really good job of making sure all those receivers are covered up, and he, he did a great job of being poised in the pocket. Um, nice pressure there. we got a wall pocket player coming up kind of limpy, Mikey Lee, uh, chasing uh, Magoo around, but um, – you got to give a lot of credit to Walpock's defense for schematically matching up there. And, and, and look, Coach, you, lo you look at Ryan McGew, he looks so much more comfortable right now than he did in the first half. And not that he wasn't playing well in the no. first half. He just he's, he's just standing back there and waiting for his guys to get open. You're seeing some natural growth happening are, right in front are. of our own eyes. Yeah. You know, it's really developed just in this game alone. And I know if you're Coach Harmon, that's got to be incredible. Oh, you got to be really pleased. I mean, both teams are just playing fantastic football right now. So here we go, third and ten from the 49. Ryan Magoo is in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Kirk, and he is going to be taken down. And, boy, that was a really slow developing play. Well, and that's a that's a tough play because it's it's to the to this sideline, and it's a, it's a third down, and that's a lot of yards to carry. I'm wondering if Eli is just wanting to get good field position yeah, here and, and not make any big mistakes. And let's see what happens here because Brady Kirk comes off the field and he was limping pretty mm -hmm. bad and noticeably. So let's hope that young man is okay because he is such a key component to that Elida offense and defense. Absolutely. And, you know, this special teams play here, we did see a roughing the punter penalty, you know, before. So, you know, Walpock's going to make sure they get a good – So uh, Elida's clean... going to punt off to Schneider and Jolly. This is Jolly as he – Catches it clean, and he is taken down at about the 32-yard line. So that's where Eli Wapakoneta will take up shop here with 11.06 to go. They're up 14-7. to What do you think you're going to see, Danny? <laughs> I think we'll see some off tackles, some <laughs> uh, some uh, <laughs> some quarterback sweeps, some, uh, yeah. I, I think Wapak is going to stay to the script. I don't think you're going to see anything crazy here. I think they're going to try to get a long drive, and, I don't want to predict anything because I'm typically wrong, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see a five, six, seven-minute sure. drive here and slow and try to – I know there's only a seven-point lead, sure. but they've been in control here, especially up front, so you're going to see them try to uh, take some time off the clock. So here comes Moyer and the crew, and he is in the shotgun. He's got Jace Nouse to his left. He's going to hand off to Nouse. He goes around the right side following his blockers, and a great job by number 50. Who else but the Krim Reaper out there on the defensive stop? And I like the counter play. It's the first time we've seen that play tonight uh, going away from, uh, you know, trying to – uh, away from the strength of the of the, of the play, the formation, and Parker Krim, great job. He read it, he stayed home, and made a fantastic Look, we play. We talk a lot about Parker Krim because he's a freshman, but big number 55 out there. I'm telling you, Tristan, Torrey Thomas, Torrey Thomas yeah. is just fantastic. He, he's he's probably a lot of the reason why Krim is getting yeah, a yes, lot of those that's plays because they, really yeah. they really have to double him up a lot. So here comes Moyer, and Naus is beside him. He's going to hand the ball off to Naus, and he's going to try to get to the right side and just some real hard running. And he gets about seven to eight yards, and that's going to put the Redskins at about third and one or maybe two. You know, I'm watching these linemen, okay, on both sides, and they're starting to both get up very slowly. Yes, you're I right. think they've just pounded on each other, you know, all night long. And, and you know, we when we watched that OG Elida game a few weeks ago, Danny, I thought that was a physical game up front. This has by far oh been more physical. Yeah, this has been a this has been a war inside yeah, the absolutely. inside the tackles. Everybody's gonna feel it tomorrow morning. So here they come, third and one from the forty two. Moyer is under center. He's going to hand the ball off to Mechstroth up top, and he's going to easily get a Citizens National Bank first down. 
And with that, they've taken off almost a minute and a half, a minute 40 seconds just in that first down. And you can see that clock starting to wind. And, you know, I think one of the things you're going to look for now is, you know, at what point are they going to snap the ball with the play clock? Sure. You know, are they going to try to use all 40 seconds up here? And uh, it looks like Coach Moyer is going to do as much as he can to try to run this clock. I heard an interview a while back with Coach Bill Cower from the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he talked about the most important thing he could do with the lead of the ball was to run that play clock down. And he said not a lot of people do that. And he said he just burned that into his quarterbacks. You're going to keep that ball with two, three, four seconds left. Well, typically at the end of a game, what do you see? You see it being the 30, 40 seconds being sure. the most critical time. And you can make that up if you're snapping the ball 15 seconds to go when you really could be snapping it with, you know, four or five seconds over, you know, five, six, seven plays, how much time does it actually accumulate? So, yeah, that's a great point. So they'll bring up second and three from the 47. And, uh, yeah, John, I think you were so right when you talked about an 11, 12 play drive. It doesn't matter if they score here or not. It, it does, don't get me wrong. It does. But, but if they can run right. that clock out and uh, continue with their movement here. And here comes now, says he's going to pick up a Citizens National Bank first down. And now you're seeing that offensive line kind of flex their muscles. Yeah, and I think, you know, when, when you when you start to run these kinds of plays and you've got the, the Nouses and the Vextras running and you, the line starts to – they start to feel it. And these are the moments where all the, the weightlifting in the winter and the spring and it the summer – It all pays off. All that stuff pays off right now. Well, so. you've got Nouse coming in at 195, and then you can go ahead and give it to Mextroth at 210, 6'2". Yeah. He's such a wide, big kid. So uh, here come the skins. And they've got Moyer under center. They've got a single receiver to the right, and they're going to hand off to Naus. He's going to pick up maybe two yards, one and a half, two yards, but it keeps the clock going at 8.05. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good play call on your uh, – you're going to see an official's timeout here for some reason. You watch here, and he stays in bounds, and he keeps that clock running. And, uh, oh, I see uh, we had a helmet that came okay. off. So uh, they'll have to leave the game, and they'll bring in a replacement. But, no, that's just a great play because, like you said, he stays in bounds. The ball is moving. Easy four-yard gain. And, um, you know, now we're inside eight minutes uh, of this game. So here come the skins. Mauer's going to go. Uh, Moyer's going to go under center. He's got Naus and Mextrop in the backfield with him. He's going to hand off to Naus off the left side close to another first down. It's going to keep that clock running at 7.30. It's going to bring up third and two. And, and you got to believe, John, that if they don't get it here, they're going to go for it this yeah. far down. Yeah, and this is this is exactly what Walpuck wants to do. I mean, this is the, they want to, uh, to put their will into this drive and will themselves a first down um, and just take off chunks of time. And you see the app, you, you see the, the, the line, both lines, they're struggling because it's been a tough game. I'm going to call Mextroth's number here. Let's see if we can get that one. And it is Mextroth as he goes across the middle and it looks like he's got enough for a first down. They may have to measure that one. Ah, it looks like the official on the other side coming in is going to call it. Let's see what they say here. It's close, closer than I thought. And I'm surprised they're not going to measure this. Yeah, I, I am really surprised because it is really close. Yeah, they are going to measure this. So huge, uh, huge stance here by Elida. Yeah, and these yards, Danny, they haven't been easy yards. I mean, you know, they're picking up three and four, but you can see that these are tough, tough yards. And like you said earlier, you know, the size of Mex uh, Mextreth and the, the signs of the of Naus, you know, these are big, yeah. strong kids with – you know, alignment that are big, too. There's just a lot of physicality going on. John, let's take a look. Your thoughts on the new 16-team format in the OHSA. Your thoughts. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. Why don't you open up, yeah, John? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and here's why. And I'm not a traditionalist, but, um, you know, when I first started coaching, we were, we were uh, at four. Yes. Top four, if you yeah. remember back. Um, Boy, and, that was like this 50. Yeah, 60. that was a long time ago. <laughs> and it was basically impossible to get in. Yeah. I really liked the eight because um, I felt like it was tough to get in. Top eight, yeah. Yeah, you know. But you had eight. to be quality. But you had to be quality. Yeah. And when you did get in, you did have a chance to win. Now, with, with teams one playing 16, I feel like it's like sectional basketball. John, You're seeing I, yeah. a lot of blowouts. I had, a, I had a couple games early last year in postseason, and they were just absolute. You you, you're, you feel bad for the yeah. kids because they're getting beaten, not yep. physically, yep. mentally, but yep. uh, I, I, I understand why the state did it. Yep. I do. I, I don't yeah. agree with it. 
I don't either, and I don't I don't like the fact that it adds another uh, week to the season. I mean, I right. think the season starts way too early now, and uh, I just like the old setup. So here come the skins. This is Naus on the right side. He's trying to pick up that first down, and, oh, he had a tough time getting it, but he's going to make it. And he gets another Citizens National first down. Well, what a great run. I thought he went, was going to go down about four times, but he just kept going and going and going and going and, and really did a great job of picking up. Uh, it looks like a, well, must not be a first down, but uh, getting turn on the corner there. And oh, I'm sorry. You know what? They uh, they had called the first down first to play down before. before. Okay. Yeah, we got to talking. And, that's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's how you know I'm, I'm getting old. I'm talking about how I don't want things to change anymore, yeah. and I don't know what down it is. And so I heard there you, you scream for some kid to get off your lawn. That's right, so. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so second and four, we've got the down marker right here, 6.35 to go. Skins are on the 24-yard line. They're going to hand off to Mextroth, and he's going to take it uh, about the 20-yard line. And that's going to put them in the Binkley Real Estate Red Zone. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Binkley Real Estate. Binkley Real Estate has an effective sales approach, effective marketing campaign, and extensive network that will get you results that move you. I think they might want to measure this one, too, so we'll see what they say. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Craft Stadium on an absolutely gorgeous fall night, last day of September. You know, John, we talk about the extensive 16-team uh, playoff, and we had three games this year before Labor Day. Yeah. That, I just I don't like that. I, I, it, it felt like we were starting football during two-a-days. Right, and, you know, I think the big thing is that, you know, you think about school starting and all that stuff. It's fun to go back to school and then have the first football game and all that stuff. And, you know, now you're starting school, and they feel like the season's halfway over with. Yeah. And, uh, the biggest thing for me I see on the coaching end is that you don't have the days up front to practice. Right. I see teams scrimmaging after five days of practice, and that's, to me, just dangerous. Um, and, and, you know, I'm – Hopefully, don't get in trouble for saying this, but it's a money thing. It's a financial oh, yeah, issue. It's trouble. It's the uh, truth. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. You know, and at, at what expense? At, at what expense? And yeah. and you know, I think we we ask enough of kids and enough of families, but to add another season or another week into the season, I don't I don't think it's fair. John, would you ever uh, get back into coaching if the situation was right? Absolutely. You know, right now my my kids are in high school, and I have a, a daughter playing volleyball and a son playing soccer, so. You know, I, I want to watch them, but sure. they know. They're like, Dad, some of our favorite moments are when, you know, we were, we were you were coaching and we were on the sidelines or enjoying those wins. Sure. And so, you know, I think w once you – my kids had sacrificed so much over the years. You know, when, when we coach – and you're a coach, Danny, mm -hmm. you understand this. Your own kids sacrifice yep. you a lot. So – they're going to get dad for a little while, and then when they're done and all that, then I'll go back and yeah, do I, it again. I, I coached for several, several years, and when my do my son graduated, he was in the United States Navy. My daughter graduated high school, and when she left high school, she went on to college to run track, and that's when I said, I'm done coaching. I'm going to watch her. Yep. And, uh, yeah, those were great memories. And, you know, I think for kids, you know, as, as a parent, you know, the, the kids want their parents there, but I think – you know, this is something I've discovered. I want to be at my kids' stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's almost like I don't want to miss it. You know, I, I, I want them to see me there, but I don't want to miss it as easy so as well. Third and one from the 22. Moyer's under center. He's going to try to sneak it across. And, boy, big pile up there. And it looks like he may have got it as he got his six-foot body across that line. We'll have to wait and see. They're going to call in a measurement here, maybe, or are they going to call it a first down? I think they're just going to call it a first sure down. It looked right. like the uh, back judge there just signaled first down. And Looks like he got the bush push there. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, you know, on that play, you teach kids, actually. Sure. Everybody's pushing. Everybody's pushing. Yep. Everybody's pushing. And, um, you know, that little inch makes a big difference. Of course, we're referring to Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner in that huge game at Notre Dame <laughs> that year. And they referred to it as the bush push. So here we go, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. This is another epic drive by the Skins. Is a 11, 12, 13 play drive. Here comes Jace Nouse on the right side. He finds a hole, and he's going to pick up easy five yards, and they continue to wear that defensive line from Elida down. Yeah, it's just, it's just simple football here. And these these plays that they're running, Danny, I'm guessing they put those in like week two or week, days one or two I was of, say, of two days. These, yeah. are, these are their bread and butter plays. Um, but this is exactly what they need in this moment, and taking chunks off the clock and getting back to some basics here, it's its fun to watch. What's wh – look, and I'm not looking for Wapakoneta to lose or anything. What what kind of team is it 
is going to take to take a team like Wapak out when they run this methodical, just grinding style. Yeah, it's it's going to have to come down to turnovers and penalties. I mean, th I mean <laughs> right. seriously, that, no, that's I what's going to change the game and special teams plays. I mean, because, you know, I, I feel like Elida's played about as good as, you're of a right. game. That's a great point. They've really played, and the game plan was good. Everything has been good, and Wapak is still just finding a way to win. And if you look at the, the game changers, it's just those little things, some penalties, um, some special team stuff that's the difference. So they have picked up another Citizens National Bank first down with 4.38 to go. Wapakoneta leads 14-7 to as they are grinding towards another touchdown. This is Moyer. He's going to get under center. He's got Mextroth and Naus in the back. He's going to give it to Naus, who goes off the right side, inches closer to the goal line, taken down about the three-yard line. Besides the quarterback sneaks a couple times here, they literally ran the same play like seven times in a row. It's, and it's, it's the same just, thing. It's the same yeah. thing, and it's the same direction. It's the same place, the same guy. You know, I, I personally love it. I think it's just it's <laughs> a thing of beauty. Uh, I was a wing tee coach for a long time, so I love running football. Um, but, uh, but you know, you can see that it's worn Elida down. Speaking of the wing tee, did you see where the Air Force Academy football program is put on probation? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I'm not kidding you. Air Force's football program is put on probation. I'm nervous about our future for the military <laughs> <laughs> if Air Force is on probation. <laughs> Here comes Moyer. He's going to hand off the next drop, and he's trying to get to that goal line, pushing ever so hard, and he's going to come up short at about the two-yard line. Yeah, apparently they had some recruiting violations during the COVID time when they had some recruits on campus campus when they weren't supposed to. Now when I say probation, it's not the death penalty. Sure, they sure. lose a few scholarships. But, yeah, the Air Force <laughs> is cheating. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, my guess is that uh, anybody that was uh, visiting Air Force and trying to figure out if they were going to go to boot camp or not was not uh, too happy to, to be, uh, be punished for that. We got another timeout on the field. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto, home, business, insurance, and more. Allen Davis is our touchdown sponsor. And after the touchdown, we need an extra point. Our extra point sponsor is brought to you by TD Interiors. For quality you can stand on, visit TD Interiors on Allentown Road. All right here, John. So with 3.20 to go, Wapakoneta tries to keep that league lead. And we, we look here at the WBL standings. Wapakoneta leads at 5-0. Van Wert coming in at four and one, and Salina. Salina's playing as well as anybody right now in the WBL. I think they're the biggest surprise. They're really shocking some people right now with some of the big wins that they've had, and it sounds like they're uh, they're playing well tonight as well. So, so here we go, third and two from the two yard line. Moyer is under center. He's got Naus and Nextroth in the backfield. He's got a fullback in motion. They're going to go back to Naus off the right side, and he's going to squeeze into the end zone for an Allen Davis insurance touchdown. And, you know, I think if you're Coach Moyer, you just really couldn't have drawn that up any better. What a fantastic drive. And we talked about it earlier, you know, what they want to do is take off big chunks. Um, you know, they started that drive. You know, if I could think back, it was, might have been nine, ten minutes yeah. with, with, on yeah. the clock. And it was. That, that is really uh, kind of like the, the, the nail in the coffin uh, for Elida because what a, what a fantastic drive for the Redskins. So here goes Wapakoneta. They're going to try to get their TD interiors extra point. Number 39 for the Skins, Preston Meyer. Snap is back, hold is good, and the kick is up, and it is good. So with 3.15 to go from Kraft Stadium on homecoming, Wapakoneta leads Elida 21-7. Let's talk about instant replays, everyone. I see signs in Wapakoneta is the home of the business startup package. We are local, fast, and friendly. Check us out at icsigns.net. I see signs is our instant replay sponsor. And they've been a big sponsor tonight because we've had some great instant replays tonight, John. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Our camera crew being right on the spot. And uh, it's been nice to look back and kind of see what we didn't catch the first time. Right. So here comes Elida down two scores, and they've got their work cut out for them. Well, they sure do. And I think you're just you're in a passing situation now. You're, you're trying to throw the ball. you gotta, you got to get a touchdown quick here and then maybe – you know, hopefully get a stop, but there's not a lot of time left, Danny, so they're they're going to have to be going to, to, to flight mode here. And after the game, check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WSN YouTube page. Stolly Insurance is our Hustle Award sponsor tonight, so we'll have to uh, pick out a Holly, uh, Stolly Hustle Award there, John. Yeah, and Walpox 
both Elada and Walpock have had some guys that have. That, they have. That, You're it's going to be easy tonight. It's going to be easy and difficult because yes. guys have earned it, but it, there's a lot of guys that could probably earn that tonight. Absolutely. So here comes Elida. Ryan McGew is in the gun. He's going to have to throw the ball across the field. He's got a man in the middle, and he guns it across the middle. And his intended target was number two, and that was Seth Sharp as he tried to go across the middle. And he was hit really hard. Yeah, Grant Jolly came in and just laid the wood, is I guess the nicest way I could say it. <laughs> yeah, uh, but and a uh, nice pass and a nice pattern. Yeah, really good pattern. He was open, uh, just, just hit him a little late, and uh, Sharp tried to uh, bring it in there and just got kind of hit in the back, and, and it's incomplete. So that will bring up second and ten with 3.10 to go. Danny Holbrook, John Zerby from Kraft Stadium on homecoming 2022. Elida High School, congratulations to Queen Peyton Coon and King Grant Henderman, is that how you say Hardeman, it? Hardeman, I think, Hardeman. yeah. Hardeman, okay. And here's the Elida offense trying to move the ball. <laughs> Ryan McGew is just under incredible pressure, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield by a host of Wapakoneta Redskins. Yeah, Mikey Lee, he's just been all over the place today at that nose guard position, just kind of flying around and making plays. and. The big question I have, Danny, is would we know any song that's going to be played at the uh, Elida Homecoming dance tomorrow <laughs> night at our uh, age? Uh, well, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now, back in the day, we'd had some Guns N' Roses, yeah. some ACDC, yeah. you know. Some uh, good music. Maybe some Pat Benatar, you okay. know. Yeah. You're dating yourself there. 38 a little... Special. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I didn't say Elvis or nothing like that. <laughs> There's Ryan McGew as he's looking across the middle. There's a flag comes in. That's going to be a holding penalty as McGew scrambles and goes off the left side, picks up about five yards, but that's going to come back. That'll be a hold in the backfield. Yeah, we were we were in the car the other day. With my my kids are high schoolers, and, and I had a 90 station on, and my daughter said, Dad, why are we listening to Retro? <laughs> <laughs> the retro. Retro. The 90s are Retro. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my kids get so mad when I, when I get my playlist on my phone and I will play a song that they like and it's on my <laughs> playlist. And I'm like, have you guys heard this jam? And they're like, stop it, yeah. just stop You're it. not allowed to listen yeah. to that. I yet. know, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. And there's some stuff of theirs that I sure, like. absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a renaissance man, I listen to a lot of things. And then I'll throw on my stuff and they just walk away. <laughs> yeah. I try to play my music on my radio show, but it yeah. doesn't always work that way. Yeah. Here comes Ryan McGew in third and 19. He throws the ball off to the left side, and that's going to bounce, and that's going to bring up fourth down. And uh, almost a we're going to have to go for it situation, but they are backed up on the 10-yard line, so a tough call here for Coach Meyer. Yeah, this is this is or really, Coach Harmon. Excuse this me. is really going to kind of seal the game here for Walpaw. If they can get a stop here, they can they can take a knee. And I know Elida has timeouts, but they're in the situation sure. where it's it's going to be it's going to be the game if we don't get a first down. Uh, here for the Bulldogs. So th fourth and 19 from the 10-yard line. Magoo is in the gun. He's got trips to the right, a single receiver to the left, and he's got a running back to his right. He's going to go back into the end zone. He's going to look across the middle. He's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to throw deep down the right side. He's got a man out there, and he's got, oh, my goodness, number 12, Keaton Hockey, as he made a mir almost miracle catch, but that's going to fall short, and Wapakoneta is going to take over on downs. Yeah, that was a that was actually a great throw. Great effort, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, really a nice route, too. He was open, and, uh, you know, it looked like he was coming down with it. And um, But, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, what you got to do in that situation, you know, it's fourth it's down. All you got to get to make a play. Yeah. yeah, and here we are the replay, and boy, it was a nice ball. And Keaton Hockey had his hands on it. So we said it earlier. Keaton Hockey's had a rough night tonight. He's uh, he's a good football player. We've watched him a lot Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. So we take a look, uh, John. It's Wapakoneta is going to go to six and zero, oh, six and one overall, uh, and Elida is going to fall to three and three and four and three overall. And, and I'm going to say it right now, John. Eli is the best four and three team I've seen in a long time. They, they're, that's a solid club. Well, and I think the last two weeks, you know, the, the Salina game and the Defiance game were kind of a shock to Eli to, to lose those games. We, sure. we see how how good they are, and um, you know, uh, they're they're going to have to finish their season out here with the uh, with a few games. They got a tough road here, St. Mary's and Van Wert, and then they'll finish up the season with with Shawnee. So. Uh, they still got a, a tough road ahead, and if you're looking at Walpock, you know next week they're going to play a winless Bath team, and and then they're going to finish the year with two surprises, Salina and Defiant. So they still have their work cut out for them. Um, you can't have a game a night where you take the night off, and and it's a it's a game where you lose, and then and because you lost or you slipped up one night, it, it cost you a league title. 
So great, great analysis there, Coach. And uh, you're right, Wapakoneta still has a couple tough games left here. So let's uh, see what they can do. And they're, they're going to win this one with 1.14 to go. This is Mechstroth as he goes off the right side. Almost fumbled the ball. Elida tries to get him out of bounds, but he does not get out of bounds. The clock continues to run with a minute four to go. And, you know, I want to give Elida credit for playing such a, a great game tonight. Sure. They did an awesome job. But I think if you're Wapak, you kind of – you have these games where you just do survive. You know what I'm saying? You just yeah. – you, you maybe don't play your best. You're not your sharpest. They're – you know – but you just survive, and that is a sign of a good team. And maybe it's just not your night or things haven't gone your way or there's a penalty issue. You can still go out there and, and win a very tough game. It's a sign of a really good football team. Absolutely. So 37 seconds to go. This should be the last play of the game as Wapakoneta is in the victory formation. Moyer is going to take a knee here, and he will go back and take a knee, and that brings it to 24 seconds, and that will do it. So the Wapakoneta Redskins come in and they take a little homecoming joy away from the Elida Bulldogs as they win 21-7 here on homecoming 2022. We come back, we'll have our Stolly Hustle Insurance Award winner from Elida High School, watching high school football on WOSA. Back here with Coach Travis Moore of the Wapakoneta Redskins. They get a big 21-7 win over the Elida Bulldogs. Congratulations on a hard-fought win. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, Coach, we noticed in the fourth quarter when your kids really had to dig deep, they, they took that drive and they just went right down the field. And we talked about that in the booth. Is Do you do you emphasize that toughness with all your kids? Oh, I think without a doubt. You know, obviously we knew that was a championship-type drive that we needed that type of effort and really credit our guys up for up front for maintaining sustaining their blocks and our backs for running exceptionally hard there and obviously picking up key first downs when we needed to so obviously it was a great effort by our kids on that drive and we talked a little bit in the booth about the win over St. Mary's and the win over Van Wert did you emphasize that composure and, and keeping your composure during those big tough drives well I don't think you ever want to panic that's never going to help you so uh, you know obviously our guys understood the situation understood what we needed to get done to find a way to win a football game and get a step closer towards our number one goal of winning a WBL championship. Well, congratulations, Coach. Another step towards a WBL title. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. Let's get Jace Naus to step in here, Jace. <laughs> Jace Naus is our Stolly Hustle Award winner. And John, and we saw one of the best backs in the area tonight. Yeah, Jace uh, did a fantastic job. And tell us a little bit about this victory tonight. It was a tough game. I know Eli brought a really nice defensive plan, but you did a fantastic job. And just to share a little bit about that. Yeah, I give all my credit to my offensive line. I couldn't have done it without them. They battled hard the whole game, and we got it done. So, Standing. Jace, when you're running the ball and you get a drive like you guys had in the fourth quarter, do you feel that momentum? Because you look like you could just take on the world. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. We we get it done out there, and we, we keep going. So, yep. Yeah. So another win towards your WBL quest of being the league champions. Feels good to be undefeated in the league. Yep. For sure, for sure. <laughs> well, congrats. Oh, go ahead, John. No, no, just want to say congratulations and good luck. I know you got uh, several games to go here. We're pulling for you guys and fantastic player, Jace. Yep. Jace Naus, our Stolly Hustle Award winner. John Zuri back here at Kraft Stadium where the Wapakoneta Redskins get a 21-7 win. John, a tough, hard-fought battle by the Redskins, but they pull out the win. Yeah, I think it was a fantastic game, and we've seen it. We talked about it throughout the whole game. It was physical. Uh, it came down at the end of just pure guts. Wapak, you know, they're, they're, they're happy to get out of here with sure. the win, but they played a great game, and Eli, you got to give them hats off because what a great effort for them. Uh, uh, putting in a lot of young players, too. There's a lot to build on. So what a great WBL matchup tonight, Danny. So Wapakoneta stays undefeated in the WBL on their quest for a Western Buckeye League championship right here from Elida High School.